You're now tuned into the Apartment 5B podcast, where we chop it up about hip-hop, R&B, sports, love and life. Hosted by Kill. 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 What's good? What's good? You are tuning in apartment five B hosted by your man Kill. I got my squad and in fact with me as always. I got my brother day one. This dude is with was started the whole podcast game with live from the writers bench. You know what I mean? Ten years in the making through the corner radio to apartment five B through profit. The guys taking me on tour with him. I feel like you know I, I'm, I'm I'm getting my passport ready to go to you know we claim in UK and Germany and everywhere we going. Ev, what's going on, good brother? Peace, brother. Thank you for having me. Thank you for the introduction. And thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. It's your apartment, man. What the <laughs> hell are you talking about? Thank you for having me, man. It's just part of the game. Another brother who's been missing in action. Vern, out the ATL. What's going on, good brother? Vern is frozen right now, so that just goes back. But we will keep the show moving. Yeah, he will be on frozen. Back. Back. You back? I'm back. Yeah. All right. What's no doubt. No doubt. Good people, good. Man, thank y'all for holding me down, putting money on my books and everything, man. I, I, I held my head, bro. It's all good. Like, hey, like Avon said, you only do two days. The day you go in, the day you come out. That's some bullshit, because you do 20 years, you did 20 years. But, I mean, I guess whatever, you have to psych yourself out to survive, sure. You know, you do two days, sure. Like, whatever, folks, you both. They got a BK. What's going on, bro? Chilling, man. I ain't do no time, man. I'm a school kid. I'm a nerd. I'm all of that shit. <laughs> Oh, Yo, the best that. thing, the, the funniest part about the why that I love from the first episode was when D comes home and he was like, yeah, you know how Joe be? Hey, I was like, I don't know shit about Joe. I don't know nothing about it. And don't plan on knowing nothing about it. My kids be talking that, you know, Miss Kill when you in jail, nigga, I don't, nigga, jail, you bugging. No, yeah. Then we got the youngest in charge of R&B Guru, JR. What's going on, bro? What's going on? Good to be back, man. Man, I've been gone for a couple of weeks, so this is great. Yo, man, we, we took two weeks off. I feel like I don't even know how to start off the show anymore. But let's jump right into it. Today's show, I think we've been doing this. I just said me and Ever have been doing this for 10 years. I really think this is going to be one of the dopest shows because um, it's really just about love. Where's the love? You know what I mean? Do you still love hip hop? the way you loved it when you first fell in love with it. Are you just in that, are you in a dead end marriage? Are you just like, ah, I've been here 50 years, you know, what the hell, we just ride this out, you know, if it's not hip hop, what am I gonna do? Um, I also love the fact that we have creatives on here. You know what I mean? So, you know, we've got Ev and Bay and myself, uh, and, and right on time coming in, like um, my man Eddie Kane, you know, right after the dice game, slide right in time. You know, we got Rel up in here you know, to talk about from the creative side of, you know, do you still love creating the music? You know what I mean? Do we still love listening to the music? And then we also have what I like to call reporters because Vague has his podcast, JR has his podcast. You know, do you even still have the love to keep doing these podcasts and reporting on what's going on like that? So that's what this is all about. I want to talk real quick about where this came from. My man Griffin, shout out to Griff. Um, Real dope MC, me and him have always been chopping up. I met him uh, through I Am God. He came out to uh, the Prophet piece that me and Ev was doing at, um, uh, what's the name of that record store we was at? Uh, Miyagi, Miyagi Records. In Miyagi Records, shout out to Miyagi Records for hosting us in Chicago. And he said something on the timeline that kind of broke my heart. He was like, yeah, man, I'm retiring. And I was like, damn, bro, like, what you mean you're retiring? And that means something to me when, like, an indie artist says that. I don't believe that shit when he's mainstream artists because remember jay-z with the blackout was supposed to be his last album that was 2002 so you know and then timbaland was supposed to retire and everybody retired but when an indie artist says that i was like really hurt so when we were in chicago i'm like bro what, what you mean you're not rhyming no more he's like man what's the point man you know how much energy and effort i put into crafting these rhymes and doing this and then i gotta beg people to buy the music and just it's, it's just too much so he's like you know i may drop a song here and there but 
as far as making albums and full projects he's like yo i'm out the game and it kind of had me thinking like dog we've i've been doing this for a while man you know what i mean and it's like you know i, I love it but we gonna get into all that stuff so the first question i want to ask is do you still love the music as much as you used to why or why not i'm gonna set us off i'll say this i still love the culture as much as i did when i fell in love with it back in 1984. it's why you know i'm constantly buying these books you know um check the technique you know learning about how the albums were made or you know creative license this is a book about how you know it takes a nation and Paul's boutique couldn't be made now because of sample clearance or the boombox project you know or ain't no half stepping about the latin quarter so i still love the culture and you know i'm still if you follow me you know i love graffiti but i think when it comes to rap music i don't know if i'm in love with it anymore. like i feel like most of the times when the new album is coming out i'm I, if i get excited i'm usually let down i mean i was telling everybody when i sent out the topic for the show i'm like ghostface and conway both drop albums in this past month and they're two of my favorite artists and i probably will never listen to those albums ever again in life you know and to me that's a problem because i'll always listen to Iron Man. i always pull supreme clientele i always pull rejects to a goat um even eat what you kill you know but it, it just i i don't feel like I, I still have that that same love for it um anymore Vern, what about you man do you do you yo, still love yo, hip-hop yo yo no Okay, he this this I, I, he did Steve Harvey. I didn't even answer the question. He done hit the bus on Family Feud. All right, it's, it's, I, I mean, I, I guess if you're asking the the current music or the last ten years music, no, anything, pretty much. What what is that? A lot of feedback or something? Like you you freezing every now and then, but you good? All right, all right, but yeah, no man, I I don't. I listen to stuff I, I've loved. That's what only thing I listen to. So no. All right, Vey, you are probably the one person I know. I don't know how you have time in your day to do it. I feel like you listen to everything. Like if something drops, I know Vegas has heard it. You know what I mean? I don't care how. In Croatia, this nigga will know about a Croatia rapper. Like he has listened to it. Do you? And again, we're not saying that the music is whack. We're not saying any of those things. But I guess what I mean to love by it is it's kind of like you know when you start dating a shorty for the first time, you're nervous, and you know, and I get it. You know, throughout the years, you live with her, you've been married, and all that stuff. But you still want some type of butterflies. You still want some type of love to get up and then be there every morning. So, may I'm sorry, maybe the right phrasing isn't do you love it as much as when you first started but do you still love it do you still get excited you know so Vic, what about you yeah I, I think so because um like having a, a news podcast I just try to stay up on everything or at least put an air to everything and obviously there's some records that I just like instantly so they kind of become my personal favorite and I listen to them throughout the year but I do um i just think it's like oversaturated in a lot of ways with way too many mcs way too many producers um you know you got to know everybody that's new and everybody think everybody's hot um and it just feels like it's overblown and bloated so a lot of the times i just use what you know i've always used if organically i like a record um or an artist you know i'm a i'm a check for more that they have and you know, sometimes uh, I ain't gonna name no names, but sometimes you know, one artist can have a really dope project and he's new to me, and um, you know, I'm pumping it, I'm telling everybody, "Yo, this joint is I," right. and then I see they got four other projects that came out the same year, and I may try to listen, but then I'm like, "It's so much now, I don't even want to hear none of it." So, I think sometimes it could be a turnoff uh, more than be than it was in the past, but. I definitely still love it. I just take breaks from time to time. You know, I don't I don't always listen to hip hop. Uh, as some people might know, if you see me on R&B Representers, I probably listen to soul music more than anything. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's funny you said that. I'm going to come back to that point because that's the thing I've always told people. People always assume that I just listen to hip hop 24 seven, 
You know what I mean? I'm like, truth be told, hip hop may be the genre I listen to the least. You know what I'm saying? If, if, if we're really keeping it a buck, but we're gonna go back to that taking a break piece. Uh, Jr. R&B guru, hip hop, of course, but R&B for you. Um, and again, I, I I keep trying to say it's because I'm I I people I think people assume you've got the podcast, so you have to still love it as much as you did. You know what I mean? I've got apartment five B. Kill, you gotta still love it as much as you did. And it's like. Nah, not really. You know what I mean? Because we're we're still we're we're talking different things. I've always said Apartment Five B is not a period piece. Like I just put up the episode the other day about the Warriors, and if you had to find five MCs to rumble with you on the way back, um, you know, which is getting more love this time than when we dropped it. That's how I always wanted Apartment Five B to be. I never wanted it to be kind of like you know the Kendrick versus Drake thing because nobody's made want to hear that five years from now. You know, but this. So, for me, I'm never really talking about a lot of the music that's come out right now, unless it's a show about our top five of the year or the top five at the half year point. For you, with R and B, have you are are you still in love with the music the way you were? I, I am. It's just I wasn't in love with how mainstream was doing it. You know what I mean, and that's why I created you know Junior's World of Soul thanks to you because i was just like i see what's going on you know what i mean so i had to kind of say okay they're not it's not you know the one the stuff that i like is not getting played on radio they're not giving it the coverage that they used to so thank god that we have the internet so we can have we can go to different things to find artists that's why i created current r&b bangers because it was like all right cool i gotta go to soundcloud i gotta go to audio mac i gotta go to all of these other different outlets to find artists that I like, you know what I mean? Because it was like, after a while, it was like, mainstream was like, oh man, we just gonna throw these couple of artists out there and that's it, which will cause you to fall out of love with it if the radio is what you're only listening to. But after a while, you got the internet. So it's like, no, I gotta I gotta search for it because I was, I was going online saying, this is bullshit and why I ain't hearing what I wanna hear and what are all these artists and why we're hearing the same artists over and over and why are we getting a variety? It's just like, I had to fall in line and say, look, I gotta go online and search. So that's what I did. And again, that's why I'm still in love with it the way I was when I first, you know, fell in love with it. Cause I'm able to find stuff and find new artists and find stuff that I like, you know what I mean? So. Yeah. Right. All right, Ed, what about you, good brother? Um. Am I still in love with it? I'm in love with when I find good albums that I align with. The problem is there's not a lot of stuff that I listen to. Um, and I'm, for me, I, I think I'm a, I'm a little bit of a hard critic because I need to hear something that I can kind of adapt to my my day to day that makes sense in my lifestyle and things like that. And there's not too much of that from what I've seen. Also, though, I'll say part of that is, is my fault because I know my finger isn't on a pulse like that. Like, it's so much music and it's hard to find. And some of the stuff that is more popular today, even amongst like, you know, quote unquote, the underground is not necessarily all of that is not my cup of tea like that. So when I find albums that, that I align with, yeah, it, you know, it, 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 I do love them in that way, but they're far and few in between. I think that's right. my only issue. It's like I can't. It's not. It's not a consistent kind of love. It's like, you know, you, you you find an album, you sit with it for a while, it dies out. You look for something else that's as good as that was, but you don't necessarily, you know, it may not exist. So I gotta wait till the next time around for something else to come back around. Right, right, right. What about you, bro? Um, I, I mean, I still love it. I don't know if I love it as much as I did, uh, just because of just the way things are now. Like, like years ago the thing like the memories i don't have like i had back you know what i'm saying and what we went through to get music and how excited we were to get certain certain albums and stuff like that like that doesn't this it's so accessible now and it's so oversaturated that it you don't have those memories no more you know what i'm saying um but if it's something that I really like, you know, I mean, I, I, I could say I still love the, the culture. I just don't get excited about as much stuff. Kind of like what Ev said, some a lot of stuff I don't like. I don't, it don't hit me in a certain way. It's not something that I want to listen to. It don't align with my my life. You know what I'm saying? So 
I don't I don't listen to it. You know what I mean? Then everything is just so fast now. Like it just you know what I mean? It's just a different time and it, it takes away from the, the organic uh feelings you have for when music comes out and albums that you love. It's just not the same, you know what I'm saying? Right. Um wanna look at something that JR what you were saying that you enjoy the search. I think maybe that's a personality thing. Because the analogy I would use is my man's wife, she loves thrifting. So you send her into a Goodwill, into a room just full of nothing but clothes. She had, that's exciting to her. That's overwhelming to me. It's like, dog, I'm, I'm show me where the rack is for the low. No, they got it. Yes, they got it. I like shopping within minutes. Shopping with me is so simple. I go to Foot Locker, you got the 12s, give them to me, let's go. I'm out. You know what I'm saying? Same thing. That's that's the low code I want. Let's go. Shopping with me takes no time at all. Even with digging. I've had people who would go into a room full of records and a whole basement and be so excited. I'm just sitting there like, I ain't got no goddamn time to be going through all these records. Like, yo, like that's not exciting to me. Like, where's the soul section? Let me go through. If you've ever been digging with me. It's it's an hour. You will maybe get an hour out of me. If if that. And there are other diggers who are like, no, I want to be, I could be here all day. It's time to leave. So I think that's a personality thing. What do you think about that for you? Like, why do you think you're able to do that? Is it the you keep in mind I'm 50 now, so I'm really becoming an old man. Like, and I'm just Mm -hmm. like, time is of the essence. So I really you know, maybe 10, 12 years ago, or even longer when we first started. I mean, not longer, but when we first started the writer's bench, that was fun to me. Like, I want to be the one to put you on to, and you don't know about such stuff. Like, I don't, I, I don't, I'm tired. I don't want to put nobody on to nothing. I don't have the time to look for nothing. I'm just dead. So I think, like you said, for me at least, that kind of takes away the off of it. Like, we don't have that outlet. I just want to go to the record store in the mall, see the new Biggie, buy it. <laughs> go home and listen to it it's just not that simple Vern, i see you shaking your head you're you agreeing yeah i'm agreeing with you um i i think it's crazy but the accessibility is the detriment mm-hmm. Agreed. Mm-hmm. you know Agreed. It, it, music used to be big it used to be a an moment. event it, an event mm-hmm. you know going to the studio used to be Man, I'm at the studio. Now everybody got a studio. You know, you got a laptop, you got a phone, you got a studio. And so that barrier of entry has diminished like the value and for me the love of it because it's a 50, 11 million niggas that's rapping. You know, it. you just, you you, you used to couldn't just rap. You, you had to be good. <laughs> I mean, I'll not, just not say, hold on. There was some white niggas out, you know, in, in, in the 80s and the 90s. Don't, don't let me get revisionist history. But for the most part, you had to have a certain skill level to even do it. That ain't the case no more. <laughs> right. And it's funny because when you say it was an event, I'm thinking about during COVID with Tom Cruise and the new Top Gun. And they were trying to put it straight to on demand. And he was like, nah, nah, nah. We got to wait. We got to wait this thing out. This has to be an event. You need to go to the movie to see this movie. This is just not a movie you can just watch on TV. And I feel like that's what's happening. There was a time when I was like, oh, that'd be so dope if I could just watch a movie that's at the movies at my crib the same time it come out. And now when we have it, I'm like, but it's not, That's what that was the fun. The fun mm-hmm. was going to the movies. The fun was a date night and you and wife here, you and your boys. And you, <laughs> like it was, it was that. It was an event. And it's like the thing that I find myself, I used to wish for now that we have. And I'm like, kind of whack i, I want to watch the amy winehouse mo- movie in the movies i don't want to watch it on my couch like that's not fun anymore um can you say more like like if it was too easy you didn't want her bro she was she was she was just a jump off but right. if you had to work to get it it, it made yeah. it so valuable mm-hmm. right right vague what, what about you do you feel like music is an event anymore I, I think it is for some artists. I think some artists still carry that mystique of when they announce they got a new album coming out like a Nas or Jay-Z or, or whoever, somebody big. Um, I think sometimes you could feel the anticipation from back in the days. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, then you got guys like, you know, 
with Zelda who are releasing like three or four albums a year, they don't have that kind of energy. It's like most of the time I'm like, I'll listen to it in the morning in the gym. And I'm, I'm not staying up, you know, but like a Jay-Z and Nas, I might feel like, well, let me skim through it a little bit before I go to bed or whatever. So I think it's just really, uh, it depends on, on who it is. Like I think Kendrick probably has that, especially now. Um, you know, people are going to be excited for it, uh, but for how long? You know, right? Right. Yeah. Ev, what about you, bro? Um, no, I don't. Uh, for me, music is not. For me, it's not an event. Um, the, the people that are more popular, who will come out with stuff, I'm not really waiting for them like that. Um, for me, it's funny enough that the stuff, the people that are the, the events are the cats that are don't have that kind of a following. Um, and again, that goes back to those albums that really resonated with me. So if, you know, for, for instance, like if Jay Electronica puts out another album, for me, it's going to be an event because I like this last album. That's me. Um, so it's, it's certain it's certain um, artists in that way that I will get semi like excited just to, and, and curious to see what they're doing. Like, well, let me see what this next one's going to be about. But for some of them big names, I'm not really checking for them. Like, I'll check it when I'm in the car, if I'm on a, if I'm on a train or something like that. But other than that, it's not an event for me. All right, Ralph. What about you? No, um, I, I, I think with certain, I, I think with certain artists, it, it's kind of an event, but it's still not how I usually like. You know what I'm saying, I just think the 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 oversaturation and the over accessibility just eliminates all that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I get excited for certain artists that I like. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like. Like if Push was coming out with a new album, that's an event for me. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Nas, yeah. Nas coming out, that's an event for me. Yeah. Um, but and then it's and I again I agree with Ed, it don't, it's not even the most popular people like or people that's universally loved. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm looking for the Lupe's new album. Some people may not be, but that's an event for me. But it's it's not the same though like it's not the same type of event where i was where we where i'm getting on a bus i'm going to some uh or i'm going to broad nolly to go risk my life to go pick up a uh, <laughs> you know what i'm saying that, that that's what i'm talking about you know what i mean that's an event for me and when you get it you hype you play the album 150 thousand times that night you know what i'm saying it's not that no more you know what i'm saying so i just kind of to try to balance it you know what i'm saying balance my expectations you know what i mean what about you jr on the r b front i don't even think we have that anymore because y'all remember back then de back then we had the promos behind it that was getting us ready for these albums to come out hmm. record labels not doing that anymore so like there's no promo money so y'all remember the street teams back then and you saw all of this and it's like we don't got that no more so it's like you're not even anticipating an album coming out anymore. It's like, okay, you see it online, they say it's Friday and that's their promo. And they got the <laughs> fake, you know, Twitter accounts that's retweeting the stuff and all this kind of stuff. It's like, no, it's no anticipation for it anymore. So it's like, what? Th this is the space that we're in. So it's kind of like, you gotta adapt to it. But you guys, again, not no offense, but y'all older than me. So y'all like, I ain't got time for that. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I'm getting on that end, like, I ain't got time for this. Like, this is getting too much. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm 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 almost there. So it's like now I'm like, all right, you know, I can search and do all of that, but it's gonna come to a time where I'm like, nah, yo, I I'm good. If it's not in front of me and it's not there, I'm good. You know what I mean? I go back to all the all the other stuff that I love. So but the events yeah. anymore, we're not getting good events no more. I think the only one in RB that's really getting it is B. Really? She's the only one that's getting like all of this coverage and you see her on the Super Bowl and this and that. and that. Nobody's getting that tight because nobody's getting no promo budget. She got probably a $5 million promo budget when you got somebody like, let's say, I'd say even Jasmine Sullivan. She got like a 500, maybe a $5,000 promo budget. What is that gonna do for her? How are we gonna be anticipated for the album to come? No, so it's no longer events if you're not a big, big artist, and that's just what it is. Hey, hey, what you, Gil, say, you might bring this topic up, but you know, the other thing that I realized you kind of broached it the subject earlier I'll be 52 in a couple of weeks. 
I mean, not, that's not to say that something new can't happen, but it, it ain't pretty, pretty much nothing. You can, it's like the dunk contest for me, or or a step show. When I got to Georgia State, yo, yo, we going to the step show. Like after the third semester, I'm like, okay, how many how many ways can I see you do do handbone? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 With the dunk contest, you know. I mean. <laughs> Uh, unless yeah. there's nothing to do without a cannon, I mean, I don't know what else I could see in a dunk. So it don't, and I don't get any anticipation for it anymore. I don't even watch it. Right, right. Uh, so many things, man. Vern, when you said it's too easy, it makes me think about the Twilight Zone. People who know me know I love the Twilight Zone, like my favorite show ever, even even before The Wire. It's this episode where this dude dies and he's you know he's in this apartment and you know he gets everything he wants like what do you want oh you want women here all the women you want money all the money every time he gambles he always wins and he's like yo this is whack i don't want to be in heaven i want to be in hell and the boy's like nigga you are in hell like because it would just it was boring to him because everything came easy he got the girl he got the the the, the fixation of the gambling is being on your like sweating like is this am i gonna win am i gonna lose can i get the number can i not get the number all that was taken away and it was like yo this is hell for him and it's like that's the thing like it it's just too easy we did the episode which is a crazy episode um i'll put the link below but it was all about crazy record buying stories you know and rel is saying how he stole his mother's car to go get life after death and my man from queens is talking about he was stuck in a project in queens because some shorty had the record and niggas was trying to jump him and just like rel said putting life and limb at risk, like vague. I didn't even realize, like, yo, I'm walking to fucking Beach Street in Brooklyn in like '86 with like four hundred dollars in my pocket, like buying records and shit like that. But it's like, like that. We we have those stories. We it we have these stories that we could tell. These kids aren't gonna have a story. Somebody's gonna say, Naomi, where were you when you brought Steve Lacey out in my room? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, where were you in my room? <laughs> you know? So it's just too easy. Vague. I don't know how it was when you up at 889. Yo, when we would get records in the mail, it was like a battle royal up there because it was like we couldn't wait to rip open the box to see what we're getting. Oh, it's the new camp low. We got it three months before it came out. Like it was it was an event. And JR, I'm thinking about to what you were saying with no promo. Yo, we would have the source hyping us up. We would see the ads in the source. We would see the ads in the vibe. We would be like, oh man, it's gonna be crazy. We would get the video. You know what I mean? And we would get hype off and we don't have that. And to your point, JR, I think about even with Janet, every time I'd hear a new Janet song, you know, um, that's the way love goes. It would be like, oh, this is going to be dope. New Janet album. This is going to do a tour. So the tour is going to be crazy. It was almost like this, this lineup that we got that it was like, okay, first video is coming. We know the album's coming. The tour is coming. It's going to be a crazy year. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely feel that vague. You said that you take breaks um from the music that was actually going to be my next question so for you when was there ever a time when you was like i need a break and not like a break like i'm gonna throw some soul in here but like i'm i'm just i'm good on hip-hop for a minute like you know was there ever a time when you weren't listening to hip-hop and if not then the breaks that you do take where do, where do those come from and why do you take them yeah i never took like an extended break because you know a lot of times you know i listen to a lot of old school music i've always done that even um even back in the day i used to do that um but what i what i, I guess what i tend to do is you know you you listening to new joints here and there you listening to some of your favorites but then i you know i got playlists where i'm looking like yo i ain't listen to my slow jam playlist in a minute i ain't listen to my dance hall joint in a minute and when you go back to it, you, you realize how much you miss it. Um, so a lot of times that just takes me down a rabbit hole of listening to old albums. And um, like, like one month I went heavy on like the 90s R&B because I realized I had been listening to songs for so long that I was like, damn, when's the last time I just played that 112 album like from front to back, like just let it rock. Um, or, or Black Street or Jodeci or whoever, um, and I think it's I think in some ways it wasn't me saying I need a break from hip hop. 
it was just me saying, you know, I'm a music fan more than anything. And, you know, sometimes listening to one thing just gets old. Sometimes I want to hear Marvin Gaye. You know, I want to go down that rabbit hole and listen to nothing but Marvin Gaye. So I have a, you know, I have a, a record collection that's um, not, not like vinyl or whatever, but my music collection is varied. And I say that shit on my podcast all the time because I know some of you dirt bomb ass under the underground ass niggas think all I listen to is boom bap and head nod to death. I do not. I got so much shit that will probably discuss some of them if they knew it was in my collection. Um, but it's just to me sometimes I know when I'm when too much is too much. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'd like I'm not. Um, like originally, like I already knew about Conway and them before before he got shot because we were playing them on Strictly. Um, but when they came back, and I remember Kill, you was the one telling me like, "Nah, you going? Nah, you should listen." And all that gun, gun, boom, 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 bang. I was like, "Yo, I don't want to, I don't want to hear all that shit." Like, it's, like I, you know, it's it's cool, and I think it's cool for when I'm ready to listen to it as opposed to feeling like I got to jump on it because that's what everybody talking about. So, Right. Ev, you said earlier that you don't have uh, your finger on the post. When would you say your finger got off the post? Because for people who are watching, if you don't know me, I've known Ev since 90. We went to high school together, went to Morgan together. Um, always been a hip hop head, dope MC. So when would you say like you, you kind of took your like you lost the post, like that you lost the, I gotta be up on everything like that. And, and what did it? Cause I know for a lot of people, you know, we'll go deep into the conversation when it comes time to when we're talking about creating the music. And I know for me getting married and having kids kind of took a little bit of time away from that, at least from the creative aspect with me. But what about you? When would you say you kind of lost keeping your finger on the pulse? I kind of fell back from it when it started to become oversaturated. It just was so much music and it became a, a job trying to keep up with everything. Because, you know, back in the day, you naturally kept up with everything because you were part of the culture. So you would talk to people. This was out. This was out. That was out. And you wanted to check it out and hear, you know, gain your own perspective. After a while, when um, people stopped, I think around the time when, you know, Cat stopped doing, to, to Vegas Point, Cat stopped doing albums and, and singles became more of the thing. Like, I'm going to do a song here. I'm going to do a song here. After a while with that flood, um, for me, what I felt was happening was it became too easy to put music out. And when it got so easy, the quality of music started started to dip. And I'm not going to, you know, I don't need to be in the crowd of just average ass music. So it was like, all right, let me just, you know, let me just step back. You know, and you know, you put a little, a little trust and faith that, you know, the shit that's good for me, well, I'll find it. And I did. Most of it I did. Some of it, I'm sure, kind of got past me. And But I'm okay with going back and listening to an album that came out four or five years ago. If it's dope, I'm good with that. And I'll, I'll sit with it, and I'll sit with it for a while. Um, if it's dope and it resonates with me. So, But I think when, when things got, got oversaturated, that's around the time I was like, you know what? Uh, and, I, and, you know, and I listen to everything. I, I have too much other stuff I can listen to. I'm, I'm a, everything from rock to dub to, you know, all these different um avenues so it wasn't like i needed to be in hip-hop hip-hop is still my core still the love but i'm not going to you know I, i'm not going to i didn't want to be like to your point of, of what the the message you sent out kill i'm just trying to be in a dead-end marriage with hip-hop i just you know i want that shit to to still to resonate with me to excite me in a certain kind of way like you know to, to make me want to go and write or make me want to go and produce or, or do something you know, I still wanted that kind of push. And when I felt like it was a combination of oversaturation and then the lack of quality, that's when I was like, ah, I'll just, and and for me, I got a lot of the good shit coming on the show here. So I would cast me talking about, oh, this is such a dope. I'd be like, I'll, I'll be, I'll, y'all know, I'll be over here writing shit down. Like, well, let me go check this out after we get off the show. So that's how I got, you know, that's how I would, you know, kind of figure out what what's good or, you know, kind of get that funnel system going a little bit. Right. Bro, what about you? Have you ever taken a break and been like, I just, I need to chill out on on, on this hip hop thing for a minute? Um, I never like, it, uh, it It happened naturally for me. Like I just be in my R&B bag and 
that's all I'm listening to. You know what I'm saying? It just it just happened. I don't make a conscious effort to take a break. You know what I'm saying? It's just like I grew up um, like the music that listen to the music that my mom listened to, listened to when I was a kid. It was very diverse. So my I think my I listen to a whole lot more stuff than just hip hop. So I think uh, it just happens naturally for me. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I, I might be listening to Bill Collins. Um, you know what I'm saying? I might be listening to Elton John. You know what I mean? I'm, and then I might be listening to some R and B stuff. And then you know what I mean? Like it, it just happens naturally. It just depends on how I'm feeling. You know what I mean? Right, Vern. I know we've talked numerous times on the show about how uh, you took a break, and uh, somebody told you about Kanye. You know what I mean? And, and that was like a name that kind of brought you back into the mix. What um what made you take your break? Or what 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 if you can't? When was your break? You know, before the guy saying, "Yo, I think you like this guy, Kanye West." Um, that's a good question. I, I think um getting married, having a family, having a mortgage, uh, my, my career, all of those things, like I didn't have a free time to just do that. And so when I did have a free time, I listened to what I know, you know, as opposed to trying to discover something. And that guy, Andre, it's funny you, you bring us up. Dre was like, man, judging by the stuff you say you like, I think this, this would be it. And he was so right. I mean, college dropout was like refreshing. Like, oh, okay. So that that reminds me of when I fell in love with hip hop. So yeah, um, I don't know if I answered your question, but no, um, no, 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 no. It did, it did, it did. And that's gonna tally in something else after I go to Jr. Uh, what about you, Jr.? Have you ever taken a break? And and I would find this hard to believe if you say you have, because I, I just feel like you okay. I just feel I like you like have a jukebox and you're like you ever been to the silver diner and each table has a jukebox mm -hmm. i feel like that's every room in your house and there's just soul music playing as you walk from room to room another song comes on i i have and it was it was actually when i said when i saw it, what mainstream was doing with r&b for a second i was like let me chill for a second because i'm actually getting annoyed with what's going on for real so i was like let me take a break and come back to it and i took a break for it and this was like around 2010 and i took a break for for like a couple of months and i just went to i listened to nothing but gospel rock um what else was i listening to gospel rock i was actually on country tip like i was like let me leave r&b for a second so i can actually miss it and see why i fell in love with it so I was listening to all of that and getting into that. And then it was like, I slowly started coming back into it. And that's when actually Janelle Monet released Large Android. And I was like, oh, so we still got people. Then CeeLo came out with Lady uh, Killer. I was Lady like, Killer. oh, we still got people that's actually out there doing what I love. So it got me back into it. But for a couple of months, I had to get away from it because I was like, I'm not liking this mainstream it's really pissing me off because people are not getting the love you had you know people that were bringing out great albums and was not just getting the coverage and getting the love and getting none of that and i was like this is unfair and mind you we got platforms that talk about r&b but they wasn't talking about it and then the switch because everything they was classifying edm into the r&b now so they was like this is the new r&b now and i'm like wait what and I'm like, at a time, again, we all, you know, go back to the 90s. It was so much, much different R&B that you could say, oh, I like this and I like this. And everybody was getting love. So I, I hated on the Neo Soul thing, but at least we had that. Then you had alternative. Then you had, you know what I'm saying, uh, contemporary. You had the regular. Uh, so everybody was getting coverage and getting the right coverage. We was getting this to now. It was just one type of R&B and that was it. And it was that bringing that house into it and i'm like in the 90s we had that too you know what i'm saying and it was getting loved in too so i'm like okay we got other r&b as well so again that that was my break i was like i couldn't and i saw myself on social media like going oh this is bullshit the r&b is not getting love as you used to and i was like 
all right, I'm doing too much. I'm doing too much. Let me get away from it and then come back. And then I did. Because even my mom was like, when you come home, I don't hear you listen to R&B. I'm like, I just can't. I got to stay away from it because I'm so pissed off about how it's being done. So it was about 2010. I took a break from it. All right. And for me, Vega, I don't even know if I ever told you a story. So in 97, I'm coming back to 889. And I didn't want to take a break from hip hop, but it was just too many killers. Like, I felt like around that 97 time, like everybody was a killer. And it's kind of like, you know, um, Ev, me, Ev, and Rel's neighborhood. Like, I was talking to my man Doc, who's been on the show from, uh, he's a professor at UMD. And he was talking about, I was interviewing him on my jobs podcast. And he was talking about, like, how diverse our neighborhood was, how uptown was, how you could have a criminal who lives on your block, but then you have a lawyer who lives on your block, but then you have a school teacher that lives on your block. And it's kind of like growing up in that, and, and almost same way how like we're talking about, Rel, when you're talking about Elton John, somebody may be watching like, where the fuck did he learn about Elton John from? I always tell y'all, we had to sit through all this white music for Friday night videos to finally hear, you know, Run DMC. I always say we got kidnapped because if it was just up to us and we had the box and we didn't, we could just go to Run DMC rock box. We probably wouldn't know nothing about the police and Phil Collins and Culture Club and Duran Duran and Hall and No. We probably wouldn't know nothing about that. So it's like I felt like in 97 when I came back to 889 from when I was living in Atlanta, I just felt like I came back to my neighborhood from college and just everybody was a killer. And it was just like, yo, where, where, where are the school teachers and where are the lawyers and where, like, where is any of this stuff anymore? And I, I said to the team, Vag, I said, look, y'all, I know we can't not play it, not play any of it, but I really need y'all to like cut back. And I said, yo, I know I'm bugging right now. Y'all probably think kill on crack. This is before I got saved. I wasn't even going to church. And this had nothing to do with church. It just was just like, and it's weird that just so much killing didn't even feel right in my spirit. And this is before I even knew anything about a spiritual world or anything like that. I was just like, if y'all want me to step down, I'll step down. And little Mike, a tight, y'all can host. I just can't put my name behind just all of this killing. You know, so I don't know how we do it. If everybody, every DJ gets one killing song to play a week or how we diversify. But I was just like, yo, I need a, I need a break from it. So it wasn't really a break from the music, but vague, maybe like what you were saying with Griselda, it was just... Like, yo, it's just too much. Like, I saw a tragedy to Intelligent Hoodlum become tragedy Gaddafi. <laughs> like, I'm seeing people change. Like, you was just saying, arrest the president. He the drug dealer. Now, nigga, you the drug dealer. <laughs> like, it was it was just too much. Everybody was from Queensbridge. Everybody was shooting everybody. And it was just overkill. And I was like, yo, I just, I, I need a break from that. You know what I mean? It was because we still getting the lyricists loud. So we're still getting good music. We still getting most. We still getting raucous. But I was just like, I need a break from that. And to Vaughn's point, it was Kanye that brought me really back because Kanye was showed me what I missed in hip hop. And I missed that about, it. I mean, to me, I think my favorite, y'all know my favorite year is 88. But what I loved about it, it was just something for everybody. It goes back to our neighborhood. If you wanted some silly kid in play, you could have, and it wasn't even silly. Like, let me not even say silly because Getting funky, do this my way. Last night, you know, rolling with Kim play. These were not silly songs. They were dope ass songs that we played at parties, that they played at clubs. And you know, you could have your Kwame, but then if you wanted some rah rah, you could go to NWA. You could go to some EPMD. And I felt like Kanye for me, like you said, Vern, was that breath of fresh air because it was like this is like Kwame. I remember the first time I saw the video for the man we all know and love. And I remember going to school after the next day, like, yo, who's this nigga Kwame? Like, yo, we got the ill blonde streak in the front. And, you know, he doing the mini rippets and stuff. And, oh, this is dope. And it was just this excitement of it. And it was just so dope. And I'll never forget, there was a time when I looked up and I was like, it's so dope to see for a minute in time, like the three biggest rappers, Kendrick, J. Cole, and Drake, nobody sold drugs. It wasn't about no gang banging. It wasn't about, these were just three normal dudes. And I was like, this is what... I'm talking about where we just had the three biggest stars in hip hop are just normal fucking people, you know, and you hear back, I'm gonna get to you and you hear how so many of these artists, the Kid Cuddies and all these new dudes like, yo, Kanye is what opened the door for us to not have to be the thug dude. And I always loved it when Kanye says when they thought pink polos would hurt the rock, you know what I mean? Because that's really what it was. It's like, I don't know, we could sign you nigga like you. 
you wearing pink polos and you fucking you know like wearing a book bag like so it's like they was they were scared of that but then when it popped then the industry said oh we need more pink polos and bring them on in and that's when all the kid cutties and everybody came in the door vague what were you going to say i was going to say when i came back to strictly hip-hop um i guess it's 2013 or 14 or something like that um you know i want i felt i felt kind of the same way like i wanted to do things differently i think when i started uh early on like 2000 and, or 2000 or whatever um you know i was just worried about being the best in in bmo on the radio and having exclusives and talking shit and it didn't really matter about the content and i think when i came back because it was such a different time especially with the internet and soundcloud rappers and all of that um i i felt a need to like give variety to that show as far as the different artists out there because to your point one of the good things about the internet is you discover all these cats who kind of do some of the things we said we love and they're newer cats so like the joey badasses were on were next to the conways next to the nipsies uh next to the the kid cuddies if he had a joint that was on some rapping stuff uh or earth gang was a, a you know early on i played them when they were really rapping um and it was just a way to provide variety but to your point this was a whole different set of uh djs and i had listened to strictly before i came back like two weeks in a row just to hear what it was and you know all the groups i like but it was all locks it was all and not like styles p's conscious stuff it was like all like yo we lift you up with 36 shots you <laughs> right 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 Damn, all up for five hours <laughs> So, <laughs> like somebody got killed. It's Baltimore still. Like it's still Baltimore, y'all. Like, like niggas nigga, nobody go playing like. Kirk Franklin, and we play a lot for five hours. We have definitely right. raised the homicide rate in this city. Right. It just it just was like almost like typecast is strictly hip hop mm. to mean that it's only this now. But I know you and, and Vinny V. I was like, no, it was a different strictly. It reflected the music of that time and now you have artists newer artists older artists who can provide that variety but a lot of cats just be stuck man and you know that's all they think hip-hop is is that uh which isn't true so right Ev, what about you did anything have you did anybody bring you back like has there been an artist that made you say like okay like yeah uh, like the that breath of fresh air or, or it made you feel like you know i'm back in love with this um usually it's artists that that make me want to start writing again so i would mm -hmm. say like uh kendrick was one um Ari said you know um jlx album was another one um i think this is sporadic it's a little stuff like right now there's some cats out of la i think they're called stir the pot they're another one um so it's, it's little things that i that i get here and there that i hear that make me want to be creative that right. that that like ignite that thing and to ignite that thing that means like i'm going to listen to your album because i'm i'm really digging it uh, and i'm going right. to listen to it i'm going to observe them analyze it and be like damn that's i like how they're doing this I like how they're doing that um so those kind of those artists um have helped me get back in i think prior to that time frame i'm i'm the, i'm the dude that wasn't into the the whole lot of gunshot like you can only cook coke so many different ways <laughs> um you know i got cast that you know so, so stuff like that didn't intrigue me actually it was the opposite because to your point earlier we lost a lot of the different categories that we had we had right. we had the tribe daylight category we had the you had the um you know um the con the, the the kanye's or the kwame's um, from back in the day, we had the kidney plays. We had different love, different var var varieties of hip hop that we could kind of just like move back and forth with. So if I'm in, if I'm in my MOP bag, it's cool because I may come over back over here and be in my in my daylight bag. So I could kind of move around like that and didn't feel like I had to just be stuck in a box. Um, so that for me that that played a that played a huge part and that kind of that was part of the thing that kind of like made me kind of fall back because. Mm -hmm. When everybody started killing and everybody was cooking coke and everybody selling coke and everybody like everybody's a everybody's a drug dealer everybody <laughs> none of y'all locked up 
<laughs> I know drug dealers, and a lot of times they get pinched. Ain't none of y'all got pinched, and everybody's is selling weight in mass amounts. It just came came too much of um. I think it started to dishearten me when I realized that um, art wasn't imitating life. Now life is starting to imitate the art, and right. that's a bad thing because, like you know, you hear cats say, "You you you're imitating lies." And now you got to back these lies up. So what happens now? You got, you got young cats dying, you know, trying to trying to live up to these to these ideas that were never actually true in the beginning. Right. And that kind of that was the thing that kind of made me want to be like, oh man, not fuck it, fuck hip hop. It was never that, but it was like, damn y'all, what are we what are we doing? What are we doing? What, what are we really doing right now? Or what are we allowing them to do to us right now? I it's funny that. because it's, it's like you said it's not fuck hip hop because I feel like hip hop is the culture I feel like it's fuck rap because mm -hmm. that's essentially you know what it is. Well, JR, fuck, the fuck the business. Yeah, you know? fuck the business. Yeah. Fuck the business of it. Um, it's funny when you say that because I'll, I'll get into that later. Uh, JR, what about you? Did anybody bring you back? Um, you know, and and even if not brought, necessarily brought you back, but mm -hmm. I know you love the shit, Ellis. Like, is there somebody that really like? showed you like hip like r b is real r b is still here it was when, like, my man. when right. janelle Monet came back okay, he did that okay. and, and afterwards then i was like okay we got a lot of that and then, again i had to start searching for it so after i started searching for it then it was like oh it's out here i just gotta search for this thing and mm -hmm. i'm like other people feel the way i feel too so then that's when I started the thing with current army bangers because like Ev said, it was all the now it's all about singles now. It's not bodies of work anymore. So now it's like you can go and be like, all right, I don't like this song, I'ma just get this. Y'all remember at the time we brought albums and it was expensive and you had to listen to it and pay for it and deal with what you paid for because this music wasn't cheap. You know what I'm saying? So now you got people going on like up, oh, nah, I listen to that. So I'm like, all right. Well, let me create a show that just talks about different songs. And then maybe me talking about this song will have them be like, yo, y'all should go listen to the album too. Like being like a street team type of thing. So that's what kind of was the domino effect for me. Kind of after the 2010s and those albums came out, then it was like, oh, okay, let's get back into this again. And that's when I started going back from the Motown to Stacks to this, to that, to make me really, really love it again. So. It's funny you say to pay for it because I think now that Naomi has a job and when she pays for things, it hits different when you pay for it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So she's seeing like, yo, Jordans are $220. Like, yo, <laughs> like, yo, I don't really know if I'm copping these days. <laughs> like, you know, that when I was buying them, it was give me everything on the shelf on a size nine. Like she was Jay-Z. You know, but now that somebody's like, yo, I don't know. I don't know if I need them red taxis right now, you know. So it is about, I always tell people, when in 93, when you had to come up miraculously, however we all did it to get an SB12 or an ASR10 and all that, you were not giving up on that dream. Like, I had to move heaven and hell to get this equipment, nigga. We gonna sit here, we gonna learn how to work this equipment. Whereas now you brought an iPad. You didn't buy an iPad to make beats. You just brought an iPad. Oh shit, Garage Band's on here. I'm a producer now. Ah, I'm not really that good, so forget about it. So the people aren't even getting better. There's nothing for you to get better. Or back in the day with an eight track tape for people watching, you couldn't fast forward. You had to listen to the whole album. You were kidnapped. So you were going to learn the damn words. Because when you wanted to listen to song three, you had to listen to songs one and two first. So you were going to get to know the album. Bro, what about you? Was there anybody who brought that excitement back to you? Uh, from taking a break or somebody that was like, yo, you gotta hear this person and it kinda got you excited like it used to? Yeah, so um I would say like I mentioned him earlier, I say Lupe got me back just because he seems like a regular dude that was just that can rap and spit in and was creative with it, you know what I'm saying? And not and was able to just be itself. Like one thing about me, um you know, I love, of course, Mob Deep, Beans, people like that. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> I got to have you love Mob Deep. Yeah. I, but one thing I learned uh, making music and saying certain stuff and putting certain stuff out in the universe, like you attract a certain, you attract certain things. And I had to learn that when I was younger, like 
You know, what I mean, I was in a group and, you know, we were saying certain things and then wondering why we was attracting certain energy, you know what I'm saying, from from other people. So, like, I got a little more responsible with what, you know, what I was putting out and what I listened to on a constant basis. Like, it's a, like, y'all talking about y'all radio station, y'all, you had like a, it was good that you had like, you felt responsibility of, what you're putting your name behind and how it can affect the people that are listening. Some people don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? And that's how we get situations like that we in now with, with these kids dying and all that. So I uh like somebody like Lupe, somebody like Fonte, like where they where they talk about like Fonte talks about like adult things in his life. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like yeah. and stuff like that was was is refreshing to me and it kinda keep you going because everybody ain't 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 gangsters and I, I can't stand like tough for no reason dudes. Like I, I never liked those dudes. Like you tough all the time. You tough around your kids. You tough around women like relax bro. You know what I'm saying? So um so people like that like really really inspired me to you know um get back into it and show that some of the some of the fun and some of the the, the just normalcy is back in hip-hop and not everything is you know tough gangsters and drug dealers and users now it's users everybody's we the, they, they the addicts now you know what I'm saying? When the fuck did that become cool? Like we came up during the crack era. Like, do I? I when we show you what, how that affects people, families. When we show you some real addicts, and you want to be, you know what I'm saying? So that's where we at with it now. Now tell me this: Do you feel like um, right now, hip hop and R and B um, is in a is is in a dope place? You know what I mean? Or if if you can't look at it like that, maybe. How many mics do you give where hip hop and R and B is like right now as a whole? Like I'm sitting here and I'm like, damn, okay, we already in June, so that means it's time for us to do top five albums so far of 2024. I don't know if there have been five albums that have come out that could even like. The thing I love about doing the show is I get to see like the trends, and it's kind of like, yo, I don't even know if I got five albums right now, y'all. Like we may just have to suspend that show and just go with the end of the year show where we didn't have to do that five years ago. Five years ago, we'd be like, oh no, okay, I got this, I got that. Like, oh, I have to move. I mean, people who should have, I feel like Ghost should have had an album that would have been in my top five. I feel like Conway should have had an album that would have been in my top five. You know, to be honest with you right now, all I got is Benny and Bay good looking out, the dog pound album. You know what I mean? Um. You know, and, and, and it goes back to what we did with Porsche, shout out to Porsche, put schooling us at the year end show last year, because we always sit here like, we don't really got nothing for the year end show. And she was like, no, but all the independent artists. And it was like, oh, right, it was, you know, God, and oh, yeah, you know, Vern had to join and all the indie music that dropped. But how many mics without indie, just where we're at, how many mics would you give hip hop and R&B like, Right now in, in 2024. Uh JR, what about you? How many mics you giving R and B right now? Like, is it in a good place? Like, do you feel like you've left like like what we were talking about off camera about sending our kids to college and it's like, yo, we've instilled in them, you know, kill, you know, you and T have done a good job. Naomi is gonna be fine. Like R and B is gonna be fine. You and Elise are like, you know what? We can step away. R and B is in a good in a good place. There are some parents who are sending their kids away to college and like, fuck, this nigga's gonna be a fucking terror. <laughs> like I don't know. This nigga may get kicked out of college. He may, but I don't know. Like, how do you do you feel like hip hop? I mean, R and B is in a good place for you and Elise to just step away and say, y'all got it. Absolutely not, because the 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 culture is not to me. R&B culture is not to me, and I feel like that's why people like me and the least with the R&B reps are needed because. Now, what's the R&B culture? Break down what that is. I feel like you need to know the history of this before you. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of these new kids don't know where everything comes from. They feel like, oh, 
their artist was the one that created it all and it, you know what i mean they don't understand that there's nothing new under the sun so a lot of what these new r b artists are they feel like oh this is it and they don't know a lot of them don't even you know what really really pissed me off and this was 2018 and this is why when i knew i needed to do to keep doing this and we need more platforms when lma came out and aretha had just died and they asked her to name three aretha franklin songs and she couldn't do it that right there you are a new artist Everybody in R&B know who Aretha Franklin is. And you couldn't name three songs? That just told me right then and there where R&B is. If she's doing that, what about her fans that watch that rock with her? She could have been right there and said, oh, these, this is Aretha Franklin is this. She couldn't even speak about any of that. And I'm like, you gonna talk about R&B and don't really know three songs from Aretha? So for me, that just goes to show where the R&B culture is. It's like, yeah, y'all, that's why, again, it's not what it is because the ones that's doing it don't even know. Like when I said on the show many times that, uh, what's his name, Tory Lanez came on and used the brownstone sample. He didn't know what sample it was. That's terrible. Like, and it wasn't like brownstones, if you love me, wasn't a big smash. So how do you not know that? So right then and there, this is where the disconnect is happening. And I was like, uh-uh, nah. So for me, it's getting any worse. And that's why I like a lot of these podcasts because now we're connecting to the men, th these younger kids because they're in the podcast now. So there's no excuse. You have no excuse on why you don't know what army culture is. But again, the mainstream is pushing that and they don't care. So I feel like, no, me and Elise gotta stay on the neck of this because if we didn't a lot of people wouldn't know about joe we just did an episode about joe and they don't understand what this man has done in the culture they just know him they barely know him at all you know what i mean yeah, so that makes sure is because you say the mainstream is pushing it mm -hmm. where, where are they pushing it because we talked about like you know there are no outlets. So back in the day, it'd be like, yo, you're on 106 and Park, and you're on the cover of Vibe, and you're on this cover, and you're, it's this commercial on BET. Like, even when with the mainstream artists, who, how are they pushing it? Like, I feel like nobody is really getting pushed nowadays because it feels like you have to do it yourself. Like, it's like when uh, Apple Music just came out with that top 100 right say say less i got you apple you know what i mean right. and then That's you throw you. frank ocean in the middle of that right <laughs> in the there just tells me right there what i need to know like come right. on yo like right. he's not say. say less you're right. Apple, like, the title. Right. And that's the right. that these kids go to. But so, that's that's hundred percent right. That's what I love about what you said because I don't go there for that, but that's where they go. They go, yeah. That's where they go. So say less, that's exactly what it is. Vern, what about you? Where are you putting hip hop right? <laughs> I already know what Vern. <laughs> Man. Vern, like, <laughs> Oh, um, are, are, are you good where hip hop is? Are you okay with passing the torch and saying here? Yeah, it it, it ain't for me. It, it's, I'm not their demographic. I'm cool with that. Um, and here's here's what something I want to say. Something you said earlier. Before I fell in love with hip hop, I fell in love with Earth, Wind, and Fire, and Isley Brothers, and Steely Dan, and Ball Skaggs and Andre Crouch and, and Walter Hawkins. So when this hip hop thing came like, yo, this is this is for me. But as I got older, I'm gonna fall back to my bass, my, my fusion, my jazz and all that stuff. And then I'll, I'll intersperse some of the hip hop that I do love. So I, cause I think here, um, one of the, the downfalls to music as a whole. JR just said that she did not know Aretha Franklin. The crime is not that she didn't know. The crime is that she didn't have the curiosity to care to know. That part. And, you know, so I always use the analogy of a 64 box 
crayons with Crayola with the pencil sharpener. That we all wanted, because that was the big boy box. If you had that box with the pencil <laughs> sharp with the crayon yeah. sharpener, you you were stunting on them hoes out there. Or you go to the restaurant and get the three 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 crayon kid meal menu uh, crayons, and that's what's feeding everybody now. Everybody's got the three crayons when. You know, and I don't want to come off as no curmudgeon, you know, back in my day. But I mean, facts is facts. You know, it, it's, there's no substance. And I think for me, as a soon to be 52 year old dude, I got to have substance or my time, I mean, tomorrow ain't promised to none of us, but my time is, is very limited and very short. So I'm only listening to quality stuff. Only listening to something that got substance depth. That don't mean I'm listening to NDRE, you know, preaching to me all of the time. But what I'm saying is the music has to have substance. It has to have, you know, great production, great lyrics, great singing. Why would I, why, if, okay, if, if I came up on John Coltrane, why would I want to listen to little Timmy play the scales on his sax? Right. So I didn't answer your question, but if you want to rate it, no, I, I'm not the good person to ask that question because you already know what it is. Yeah, and, and it's funny you said that because I think the other piece that's sometimes missing with hip hop is you make a great point. I, I fell in love with hip hop at 10 years old in 84, but that means for 10 years I was listening to other music. Mm -hmm. You know, and for a lot of these younger kids, they came into hip hop. You know what I mean? They don't do they, we all were here, well, maybe not you, JR, but the bulk of us were here when there was no hip hop. That's not right. a shot, JR. I'm just saying, no, 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 I know, I know. Yeah, I know but like, we we knew life before hip hop, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, and everything like that. Um, I think it may be different from you, you being in New York and being around that may be different, but I know for me, of course, I heard the breaks and I heard Christmas rapping and things like that, but it wasn't until I heard rock box. Um, Vague, uh, you listen to everything. I'm really interested in your answer. Do you feel hip hop right now is in a dope place? How many mics are you giving it? Do you feel good, you know, passing this along or passing the torch like my work is done? I don't think so because I think it's complicated at this point. Um, just to play devil's advocate, I think there are pockets of hip hop, especially mm -hmm. rap, that are actually good that we would like. But I think the internet and social media and um, chat rooms and stuff like that is it's, it's silos now. Um, you can find a silo that speaks to what you like and the music you like and you can share music and discovering new music or whatever. And it'll seem like hip hop didn't miss a beat. But in my case, doing a, a news thing and just watching how like it's all over the place, even just watching people trying to judge Drake versus Kendrick and they're arguing things that don't even have anything to do with bars. You know what I'm saying? They, they're arguing all investigative reports and shit. And, you know, they're like, no, Kendrick lied. That ain't true. Drake does not have another kid. Right, like, right. <laughs> you're like, he's not a pedophile. And it's like, we don't care, dog. He has a hit record out that's dissing this dude. Like, that's a win. But in a lot of ways, um, I think that's the problem. It's, it's kind of silo. So to me, it's like, look, I say this shit all the time. Some people don't believe me because I keep doing it. The minute I quit hip hop now, I will quit because I have no desire to keep making content, um, you know, for a, a game that's ever changing so quickly that I don't know if I could keep their attention on what I'm doing. Um, and in a lot of ways, if I wasn't doing the hip hop joint, when I was on Twitter, I was talking sports. I wasn't doing all this hip hop talk. I was always talking sports. So I, I think in a lot of ways, I don't think it's in a good space because it's so segmented and disjointed. And, you know, you got to go and search and find the shit you like. And you just may happen to hear about it, that it just becomes it just becomes a lot of work for people who just want to hear good music. Um, so I don't I don't think so. And one last thing, part of that has to do with hip hop media, because uh, mm -hmm. what's popular on the podcast side, even cats who are our age, they choose when they want to be our age. You know, True. some topics they you know they go with the kids, 
and then other topics they say okay it's too far um, you know that uh, that's enough like and it just happens it doesn't happen enough and i think a lot of times they just lead people to think um you know hip-hop is whatever it is today when it's so much bigger than that so right, right. ev what about you is hip-hop in a good place is it hip-hop i think i always yeah. kind of stuck there like you know what you know not that i have i don't know if i have the credentials to say yay or nay but i i definitely ask the questions i think you know we're in a in a state where everything gets a hip-hop label and some of that stuff is different kind of music i feel like a lot of the music today is not necessarily for me um it's for the younger generation and it's for whatever you know whatever their lives are doing whatever you know however it speaks to their lives at that point in time so um when i do hear stuff that to me feels feels like hip-hop it's really good so you know there's there's times i hear stuff i'm like oh them cats is real dope but it's like needle in a haystack it's very far few in between but when you hear them you're like oh these motherfuckers is nice and they kill it and they got a solid they have a solid concept they thought about what they want to do they put some time and energy into it and it's packaged well and it's like yeah and i'm gonna rock with them and i and when i hear shit like that i'm like oh i could chill out i'm good hip-hop is hip-hop as i know it is good but the problem is there's not too much of that and a lot of the stuff that's out it's like everybody puts puts a hip-hop label on anything you can have somebody walking down the block you know, whistling uh, a folk song. Oh, that's hip hop. Like, no, fuck, it's not. And I think that's part of the problem is we keep um, we allow those things to happen. To put all these, you know, just everything to get put under this one huge umbrella, and it all is the same thing. When it's it's variations of a lot of different things. Also, think that um, you know, to the point of having to dig for music. You know, you got to really dig in and really kind of find the thing and. The problem is, I think algorithms is, is an evil ass thing. You know, you got algorithms that, that, that they make that shit extra difficult to find good music because they want to put you in a fucking box. Mm-hmm. You know, the record stores is closed. So you can't, you know, ain't too many record stores you're going to go to that's going to sell anything outside of vinyl. So trying to find new music becomes more, it, it's like, I feel like an Indiana Jones sometimes trying to find good music. I'm just digging, you know, going through Temple of Dooms and shit, trying to find some actually quality work. So, to your point, I mean, to your question, when I find hip hop that 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 feels good, the shit is great. Um, but a lot of stuff that I hear, ah, uh, no, it, it, I, if they if that's what they're calling hip hop, then no, it's in a bad place, um, or it's in, it's in a different place. I don't want to sound like the old head. It's in a different place. No, here, here's the thing. I, I I I like being called the old head. I like get off my lawn. I spend a lot of money for my fucking lawn. So yes, I can tell y'all, young motherfuckers, get off. Me. Um, <laughs> I, I think what you it was funny when you were explaining when you hear somebody new the expert the the first people who popped in my mind when you were kind of talking about when you hear somebody who's nice and he's, I thought of souls of mischief the first time I heard that's when you lost and I was like yo this shit is crazy but then the way you were explaining it that could have been the alcoholics too and then it could have been tribe called Qu- it, the way you explained it was kind of like the majority like 90 percent of the hip-hop that we got whereas now is the exact opposite it's kind of like 10 percent of the hip-hop that we get because when you say that the first thing that kind of comes to mind is the the dudes coast contra you know what i mean who like these dudes who are barring and they're rapping and they're nice um but that's few and far like you know again vegas i think has his post much he's the post of apartment 5b of what's coming in that's new. But for me, I, I can't, the explanation you just gave on somebody new, I can't tell you anybody within the last three to five years that I could say matches that definition like that. Like these dudes or this one or this duo does that. Well, what about you? Are you happy where hip hop is right now? Um, that's a difficult question to answer. Like, um, I would say no, but um, certain stuff, you know, does make me happy. But a lot of I, I, I'm old enough to recognize was not like for me. You know what I'm saying? So 
you know, I've come to accept that. I mean, um, I, can, I, I don't know how I would rate it with a mic system, but I would just say this. I would say, like, the things that it's, that keep me going in the culture or whatever are a lot of other things and the music that my friends are making and, and projects that, that you know, you guys are doing and stuff like that. We got to, like, you know, put more of our focus into that stuff, I think. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, because, like, some of the newer stuff we get, and like, like you said, 90% of it is not not pop. You know what I'm saying? We get our 10%, but, like, we are, like, everybody mostly on here is doing something to, uh, something positive to keep it going in the right direction and keep it you know keep it going in general you know what I'm saying like we gotta focus more like kind of focus a little bit more of our attention on that and that that'll you know that'll keep you happy a little bit with the culture because as far as like the new news that's coming out it's not a lot that that I'm feeling you know what I'm saying so if I had to rate it just off of that then it would be it would be bad, you know what I'm saying? But I got to, there's other things going on that, that, that keep me, you know, all right. All right, cool. Um, for me, I had to write all these notes down because I'd be thinking so much about so many different things. I think from a, main, a mainstream perspective, no, I don't think it's in a good place. From an indie perspective, I feel like it is in a good place. The problem is, is that now I'm seeing indie MCs trying to emulate what the mainstream artists do. So now I'm seeing indie MCs dropping four albums a year. You know, I'm getting DMs like, yo, check out my new album. Nigga, I didn't listen to the first two albums yet. Like, just just wait. Like, you know, like, just wait. Just slow down. So I feel like then that becomes because at the end of the day, and this is going to transition us into the creative aspect of it. At the end of the day, I think we all want to make money from our art. Do we still think at 50, the way we did at 25, like, hey, I may be able to quit my day job. This is how I'm going to raise my family, you know, retire. Probably not. But I think we all would like to see some money from it. But it's like now the indie emulating that, isn't it? And I feel like the mainstream artists, their, their goal isn't to make timeless music. It's just to sell merch or drop something that they can tour on. Or like you said, JR, people are just making singles. Like... Naomi will put me on to somebody I'm like, oh, daddy, listen to this song. I'm like, yo, this is dope. Where's the album? She's like, oh, it's not an album. It's just single. And I'm like, fuck, I want to listen to the whole album. Like, the single was dope. Like, But like you said, they're doing that. John Sally talked about this, I think, on Gilbert Arenas' podcast. And he was saying the reason why LeBron James doesn't have a whole more, bunch of more championships because he's never had a system. You know, and he talked about Phil Jackson and Phil winning six uh, in Chicago, winning four in L.A. You know, Steve Kerr taking a portion of the triangle out to Oakland and winning four more. And it's like, this is what happens when you play in a system. And I feel like the system we had in the 90s is gone. We had hip hop people who ran these labels. They, the people Vegas and I would talk to who would call us to play music on the radio. These were hip hop players. You know what I mean? And there was a system set up in place for these artists to win. They had a good promo department to make sure this stuff got out and all those things. And we don't have that anymore. JR, you know, the Motown years. There's nobody at these labels to teach these artists how to be great artists. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Some of the great artists we got from Motown would have been great artists without the A&Rs building them up. And we don't have that anymore. So the number one thing now is just to make a hit. How do you get a number one song? That's what they're teaching these artists. How to get a hit. How to get a number one song. How to go on tour. Nobody's teaching these artists how to make timeless music. And I think that that's the problem right there. As creators... Adam. Hey, Phil, before, yeah. before you go, let me add on to what you just said. Yeah, please do. There are less artists and more content creators. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what they do. It ain't. Art is it's a, some content, you know, so you can... That's all I got to say. Yeah. No, because yeah. you're right. Because when you're going to... When you're watching these award shows, because I barely even watch them now, and I watched like the last BT Awards that I think I watched. It was like no artists in the audience. It was all content creators. I was like, when was this? Like, 
Y'all remember when we had our artists that actually was in the audience for these award shows and things like that. And then now you looking and it's like, you have social media awards. Like now you start to have those. It's like, all right, all right, come on. Like we're definitely away from the art of this. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just, yeah. No, 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 not at all. Now from a creative perspective, Ev, have you ever, this is what profit essentially is about. So the piece that Ev and his wife Marjani do is basically about the journey of an MC. You start writing when you're 12, 13, 14, you're now 48, 50, you know, are you still writing? Did you put the pen down? What picked it back up? Everything like that. Shameless plug, the first episode of the Profit Podcast is out. We have Tajay from Souls of Mischief on there. So definitely check that out. These interviews that have nothing to do with, we're not talking about record deals and all we're talking about is you your pen and that paper and you just being an mc so definitely check that out but ev have you ever wanted to put the pen down and if so why um yeah i have i have and the reason why was because um there was a point in time actually it was the let the rhythm hit him and i found myself writing the same verse real quick let the rhythm hit him me and ev were doing a, a remix which is crazy because i hate hip-hop remix but we were doing one called let the rhythm hit him i think it was like 2015 or something like that so that's what he's talking about with let the rhythm hit him yeah so when, when we did let the rhythm hit him i found myself in this kind of a loop and artistically in a loop and um i wasn't quite sure why during that time but I just found myself really more studying what I was doing than actually just doing it and putting it out. I'm like, oh no, let me go back and do that. But oh, let me, so you're putting so much emphasis on the study of it. Also, you know, you know, I I, I am that artist that, you know, I'm, I'm gonna hold down this little gig over here, but I'm gonna do my art over here. And it's a, it's a tough road when you're doing that. So at some point in time, you get a little, you get a little, um, you get a little resentful, you know, because music, I always say music is like a woman, man. She's going to love you. And, you know, when you step away from her, you, she's going to be jealous of that shit. And she's going to find a way to bring you back in. And that's kind of what happened. Um, so going through that process, though, I think I just I got uh, to a point. I'm like, OK, what am I doing it for now? Like what I'm putting all this time and energy to what to who? Who am I? Who's my audience anymore? What am I talking about anymore? And I think I had I let that run in my mind so much. But what brought me back was actually really just digging into those questions is how we got to do um, the actual theater piece profit. And then what brought me back was, oh shit, I can do what I love in a different form. I don't have to do a, a EP or an album. I can find another way to actually, um, cause art is just, it's your expression. I can find another way to express my love for this culture. And doing the theater piece was a way of doing that. And then on top of that, I'm talking about MCs. I'm talking about MCs in, in areas that's not just Philly. You know, we in, in MCs in Chicago, MCs in LA, MCs in Oakland, MCs in Atlanta. Like, let's go through all these places and let's talk about how our our, our journeys are so like aligned. So for me, it brought, it brought forth another love for the culture, another love for the art form. And I think my biggest push when it came to that piece was yo we're talking about an art form number one it's an art form that y'all motherfuckers don't want to call an art form so that's 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 the first problem because we have cast to put so much time and energy and study into this thing so one you gotta one first i, I'm, I want to make you recognize the art form then let's talk about it as a form the same way you would sit and talk to a painter about their portrait same way you would talk to a, a, a cello a, a cellist about whatever they wrote you know whatever uh piece that they wrote let's dig into it the same way and i think so for me it, it was not just the love of the art but also like the want and the need for the outside world to understand it and that was the thing that kind of that that brought me back in that kind of gave me that spark again also and i'm sorry for being long with it um also right, right. i think to somebody said this earlier everybody every all got studios you got a computer you got a studio and back in the day you thought the value of the studio was your equipment oh i got the mp or they got the mp they got the and those help but the value of what you were doing was the people that was in the room 
And I think that's one of the things that could that for me that kind of lost some of the juice because you know you 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 I'm a husband now, I'm a father now, so you're doing a lot of work by yourself. And that's a difficult thing to do when you're in the studio by yourself trying to create and you ain't got nobody to bounce these ideas off of. So you just, you know, you you you're you know, this it's this you know, you find yourself doing this kind of tornado spin. And sometimes that makes you want to kind of step off from it. And then you talk to certain people, like I know I always say, Kill, was that conversation we had the first time we went to Chicago and I was writing about different things, but I wasn't sure about it. He was like, Well, you ain't gotta put it out. That alone, just you saying that gave me enough um enough release to just do it okay let me just do it then i ain't got to think so hard about it it is art let me just do it and then after i did it then i wanted to put it out so right. i think the things that that brought me back was being able to do that in a different form and also relationships with cats that are still in the love for the love of the music having conversations with them is that's the biggest spark coming on coming on this show it's so much of a spark. I don't think people realize how much that is because this is not a normal thing. You're gonna find six brothers in a you know mid to th mid thirties up until early fifties. That's just like yo, we still love fucking hip hop for what it is. You don't have that like that. So you know when you find that this this shit is a jewel, and this shit is it's, and it's straight up inspiration. So. These are the things that that brought me back into it. Now, will I write rhymes forever? Maybe, maybe not. It was back in the day. I'll be like, no, nah, I ain't gonna do it forever. But now I'm like, well, maybe I I I ain't gotta put it out. I can do it for me. I can give it to my man. I can give it to you know my people's over here. I'm probably not gonna make a thousand a million dollars off of it, but it's an, it's it's something that it is it is an art form. And what I what I also did find out though, there are different avenues where you can put your your actual art in. Everything ain't got to be Spotify or in the streaming service. You can do artwork and put it. It's, it's so many different outlets now because hip hop is is seen across the world in many different variations. Uh, and right. it's multifaceted kind of thing. Right. One of my favorite evidence rhymes, he says, my raps take care of me. They therapy get shit off my chest. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I think that's the thing. It does not. Like you said, you don't always have to put it out. Well, I know you shared with us numerous times that you had put the pen down. Um, what, what made you put it down and what brought you back? Um, so I can go back a little bit. Um, I don't try to be too long, but I remember um, I was in a group and well, a collective of, of MCs, right? And we were um, remember epic records that now is not the same they're not but we had a a meeting there right and it was whether they were going to sign us and it was um they listened to the music we talked whatever and they signed a guy i remember, I remember it like it was yesterday named nascar his name was nascar right and he was the carbon copy of fabulous like he looked like him rapped like him dressed like him everything and that was like discouraging you know what i'm saying like i was just like yo and this might not be especially when you're trying to like get signed it's a different than now for me but then i was just like it was discouraging so slowly but surely life things started happening you know i have a child you know i gotta you know put food on the table and you know I got responsibilities I just kind of put the mic now you know what I'm saying I, I would write here and there but it wasn't like I went a long time it didn't happen until I got on here um you know I told a story a few times like I was on YouTube down a rabbit hole and I stumbled across an episode um and the episode was about Philly rappers I remember the episode and I watched it and I watched another episode and I reached out to see if I can get on the show. And then being around people that I can learn from and people that's like like minded like me, it kind of got me back motivated to start making music again. So I think it's just the people you're around and then and the stuff like this, you know what I'm saying? Like is what got me back to doing it you know what i'm saying i don't have to and I've, I've taken care of things in my life where i don't have to rap to eat you know what i'm saying i could just be 
creative and you know um my creative juices get me going and i could just do it and i don't have to worry about trying to get on you know what i'm saying and all that that whole thing that that all that stuff is just very discouraging you know what i'm saying so mm-hmm. being around this really and hearing you know um some of the artists that we that we associate with it kind of just motivated me to get back and start doing it again right. vague i'm interested to hear from you because a lot of people don't know they we, we we put out some music man me and Vegas have been putting out albums since 2010. We've been doing this 14 years. So prior to that, during that time, have you ever thought about like putting a pen down like on purpose? Not like on some old, oh shit, I just looked up and it's been a year and I ain't wrote a rhyme, but really on some old, I don't have time for this shit right now. I got other things to do. Have you ever been in that place? No, not really, because I think um, probably like in the late 90s, I just told myself, like I always made, wrote rhymes, made music that I wanted to hear. And I thought if somebody else like it, cool. But it's it's an outlet of, like Ev said, of expression for me. It was kind of like my, my diary where I could be creative, I could, you know, share my thoughts on different things so i got to a point you know late 90s um you know like again i think i said on here before you know i was at a crossroads where you know i had a a very good opportunity to try to pursue a record deal but it was that or finish my degree be the second person in my family to graduate from college and it was a it was a mission uh ever since you know there was a death in my family so I chose to pursue getting a degree, you know, and didn't mean I couldn't, but I felt like it was, that was more important. And after a while I realized, you know, making music, I was like, well, I mean, I could do both. Like, like I've said, I could do this on the side. And even when I had kids and, and got married, I think the only thing that changed with that was that I used to write more before that. Like, I used to just write, like, whatever. Like, lines come to my head, I'll just spend time writing. Now, more so, when I'm in the mood, kill send me 1,000 beats. (laughs) (laughs) Yo, dead ass, that's not even a joke. I I hit him the other day, I'm like, yo, bang, I sent you 105 beats. Like, dead ass, 105. Yeah, so, you know, you just sit there and just, you know, the the feeling is still there, the ability is still there. But I just have it down to a science now and my family understands that like i know they hear me in the closed office you know saying like y'all niggas is corny and they're like but but they're used to it you know what i'm saying so it's kind of like one of those things where um i never feel like there was a point i wanted to stop i ain't gonna front let me say right before we did will maddick Okay. I was like, you know what? I think I think I like I already said enough and you know, what else could I do? And I never made a tribute song to to Illwell. Like I never I said stuff in bars here and there, but I never made a, a like a, a song. And I always felt like that was the catalyst for me even rhyming in a lot of ways. How do I not have a song? And you know, then when we did the one song, um, it's the Bon Gigante. Oh, he got there. Um, I was like, this should be a project, you know. So it's just the inspiration, and like we're doing now, you know. I look back and I started rhyming in '94, so now I'm 30 years in it. So I'm like, well, I gotta commemorate that. So I'm probably that nigga who's always gonna come up with a reason, like, yo, well, Burger King got a sale, so I got to make an album like that. <laughs> Uh, nah, but Vague, the, the thing that I love about you saying that is because I feel like that's what you have to do. You know, like there was a time when it was digging and and like that Skull Snaps record, that was one of my holy grails. And it's like, the problem with the holy grail is when you get it, then it's like, now what? Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like, how do I keep it going? So it was like, you know what? Um, I'm going to do this. I'm going to start looking for just black exploitation soundtracks. I'm going to just Willie Dynamite it. 
you know, Curtis Mayfield. I'm gonna go find them. You know, these ain't even hard to find joints. They, you know, I'm gonna get the the let's do it again, the Mac. You know, the the Gordon's War. So it was like that got me back into digging because it was like, okay, now I got a reason to dig because I'm just looking for black exploitation. You know, joints. You know, my man was like, yo, I'm just looking for records with titties on the cover. So like that was his. Like he went in on that. Like yo, I just want naked women on the cover. That's all I'm looking for. You know. So again. But I think what you're saying is something that a lot of us need. Like, how do you get excited for that next project? How do you bring it back? Where do you get that inspiration from? Because JR, I'll tell you, there are records all over this fucking house. Like, it's just, I, I've been digging since 93. You know what I mean? So it's just like, you know, but still, every city me and F go to, we're, we're, we're going digging somewhere. Like, that's the, as soon as we touch down, where's the record store? You know, we're always going to go. So I love what you're saying. Um, for me, I never stopped making beats. I'm always making beats, but I think when I did get married in 2000, trying to shop the beats, because this is like, you know, the internet is still new, you know, to really shop your beats, you still got to go to New York, I'm in Silver Spring now, we got one car, money ain't great, so I'm not taking no trips to New York to try to get record deals, anything like that. But then when the MOP situation happens in 2009, I was like, oh, well, these niggas, jacked me for a beat then my shit and it made day out my shit must be good so it was like okay so that put the energy back in my back because after a while i'm like well maybe my sh i mean i like my shit i think my shit is dope i think it's on the level but you know if niggas don't but then when that happened that put put the battery in my back and that's when i started we'll make beats for food that's when i got on twitter and started doing all that stuff and but it shifted from let me try to stop selling these beats and now that we have band camp and we have ways to put out the music ourselves let me just work with mcs i know and that's when me in vegas started rocking more that's when me and my man k Fanad, my man Driz low like it was the three of them like it was like they you remember them days with k Fanad and, and Driz? like that was like the beginning of like the three-headed monster and it was like but here's the thing I think me and Vay, like, and I'm not just saying this because this is my man, this is my brother. You know, we went to Morgan, we share the same birthday. I love this guy. I'm not saying this because he's here, but I really, we put out the gray area in 2010. You're all welcome in 2012. Keep calm in 2016. Keep calm, we brought friends in 2019. Will Maddox in 21. Best Style Vintage, Volume 1. April 3rd, 2024, and we're working on volume two and volume three. It's a lot of fucking dope music, y'all. You know, and the thing about it is, it takes a lot of time for Vegas to write these rhymes. It takes a lot of time for me to make these beats. And I feel like no one hears it. Mm -hmm. And that's what, taking us all the way back to my man Griff, I understood what he was saying. It's like, yo, I honestly believe without a shadow of a doubt, that if somebody heard the gray area in 2010, we couldn't have had a fucking record deal. You know what I mean? Like dead ass, like anybody listening, if you buy any of these albums and you don't like it, I will cash app you back the money myself. That's my word. That's how much I believe in the work of our discography. I feel like we have a better discography than some of your fucking favorite rappers have a discography. But the problem is, is like, it's never been about like Vegas said for the money, but it's been about for the love. But for me, I at least want the love of the people. And mm -hmm. I feel like that's what we're not getting. Cause when uh when Griff told me that, I was like, damn, you right, man. Like, what the fuck? And I think they like that was almost like the swan song when I was like, babe, here's just 105 beats. I got nothing else, man. I got I got nothing else left. Like this is like the Hail Mary. Like just fucking go deep, nigga. Like I'm throwing everything at you because it's like, what's the point, y'all? Like, we, there's so much effort that all of these indie artists put into their music. JR, with your podcast, think about how much time and effort you and Elise have to put into getting the guests and doing the show and booking the people. And so, this is why so many people fall off with podcasts. So, over the last 10 years, I've known at least 60 people who had projects, and at least 50 of them are now gone. Like Craig Mack said, you won't be around next year because it's the effort that it takes to keep this shit going. It's not just as simple as just hit record and, you know, keep it going. There's a lot of work that goes into this. Um, so, I mean, I kind of feel like I'm at that point now. Like, well, I'm glad we're working on your project. And I'm never going to be like, yo, I'm retiring or nothing like that. But it does kind of feel like, man, I'm getting kind of tired. 
You know what I mean? It's getting tired. Yeah, what were you going to say? I just want to add real fast um, because I, I know this place. I'm sure most of us on here know this place. Um, when we're doing profit, right? Profit is a hard ass piece for me to do because I got to visit a lot of people that I've lost. So to get on stage and have to go through that thing every night, you're like, yo, this is too fucking much. I don't know if I'm going to keep doing this. And we were doing a show in Chicago and it was a, it was a, one of these nights, it was an empty night. There wasn't too many people in the stands at all. And, but what hit me was after the show, it was a cat, it was an MC out of Chicago. And he came to me, he was like, yo, this joint brought me to tears. Now he waited for me because I, I mean, we went in the back, we were in the back, it took a while to change and to come back outside. So he waited for a minute for me to come back out. I didn't know this dude from a can of paint just to tell me that. And for me, it was like, oh, that's the reason why I'm doing it. So when you have those moments where you get reminded of why you do it, it may not it may not have the, you know, the onslaught of a thousand people and a bunch of, you know, emails and text messages and Instagram stuff that's really like, you know, backing you, making you feel good. But when you get that one person like, yo, this joint hit me in a different kind of way, it just brought back that whole and like, all right, you know what? Shit, I gotta find somewhere else to do this piece at because now I'm I'm back in the seat again. And sometimes you need those things because it can get it can get daunting. You know, what I mean, you spend a lot of time and a lot of energy, blood, sweat and tears putting work together and you feel like you just hit, you get crickets. Um, but I, just, I guess I'm just saying that to say to be the devil's advocate is sometimes it's not cricket. Sometimes you'll be touching people in a certain kind of way. You just don't they don't always stay stick around to let you know. But they may have, they may have walked away with something that is life changing for them. So that's just something to keep in mind. And you know what, Evan? I'm glad you said that. And I'm gonna add that to my list of six ways. Now it could be seven ways you can support indie artists. It's tell them that shit. Tell them that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's the thing. Like, and again, out of the seven things I say, only one of y'all co costs money. <laughs> that's it. The other six are free. But like you said, that that one brother telling you that gave you the energy to keep going. You know what I'm saying? And it's like for people watching, if you fuck with an indie artist, like, you know, say say some shit like that. And again, not just that is dope, you know, but like like Vegas is old Will Mag. It's a, it's a it's a dedication to his cousin Ill Will who passed away. Like, don't just say it's dope, say it touched you or you know, it it, it affected you because that will be what keeps us doing this. Like I can tell you this. I'm I I I I may not be doing the music. Apartment 5B is just my hangout. I love hanging out with y'all. I love shopping up with y'all. I'm beyond looking for sponsorships. I'm too tired to do that shit, to be honest with y'all. I'm tired, you know. But I just love the fact of chopping it up with you. I love the the, the, the circle we have. Well, you said something, you know, like the people who are like in the 5B circle. And I think we built like a nice congregation of people around us who fuck with us and we fuck with them and everything like that. JR, talk a little bit about R&B rep. I mean, how do you feel as a content creator at this time? Do you feel like you have the energy to keep going? Do you feel like what's the point? You know, well, I uh, well, me and Elise started R and B Rest from Pain anyway, because we started it. That's when my grandma first passed, and then Elise's grandfather passed. So it was like we didn't even know what to do, and then finally we just got on camera, and then we just had the magic with each other. And then we got off offline and we just talked about what we wanted to do. And a lot of our stuff was the same. And we were just like, we want to just push this culture, like let people know the history of it, but have it be fun and having people relate to it. And you know what I'm saying? And that's why she was like, yo, at first we was like, yeah, let's just do, you know, lives just talking about different topics and things like that. But then she was like, let's do a show catch that. Cause I always say it. And she was like, yo, let's get some artists to come on the show and talk about an album. So then we can really get into the eras of it all and get into really the history of an album like that. Then we was like, well, why we always got to get, you know, like artists and have Brian Morgan and Terrence Martin and all of them come on the show. Why don't we get normal people like us to talk about a favorite song of theirs? So relate to them. So then they come on and we're talking about a song and they can go somewhere else and all this kind of stuff. So for me, I would never want to stop this because it's for me, I I find enjoyment in it because I want to, you know, when, you know, you guys come on and talk about an R&B song, I, it's like you guys light up when you talk about it because it's a favorite song of yours. You come back with the memory of it. it. 
it keeps the conversation going. And then it's like, oh, then maybe me and Elisa drop and be like, well, did y'all know this was the reason why the song became popular and blah, blah, blah. And it keeps that further. And it just makes it relatable and let people know that it's just, y'all, R&B ain't going nowhere. That's what I fight for. I'm I'm tired of this, that R&B is dead mess. Because I'm like, R&B is in the DNA of a lot of music, for real. You know what I mean? And I'm like, you can't sit there and say that it's dead. You know what I mean? And then with this generation not really knowing about, you know, the history of it all, I'm like, you got to also get people as well. So me and Elise try to be funny. We be dramatic. We be all of this. But it brings you in. And it makes you be like, oh, okay, what they talking about? You know what I mean? And it just makes you feel like you're at the kitchen table with everybody and y'all just having a conversation about music. And for me, I would never want to stop this. I don't care how old I am, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? Because I, as y'all know, I've been loving this since I was a kid. Like, R&B has been my life. So to finally have a platform to talk about it and relate to other people, I would never want to stop this. I would... My mother even said to me, like, that's my music teacher. She was like, I would have loved to do this, but I'm older now. You know what I mean? She like, I don't, that's not my thing. She was like, I passed it on to you. So she was like, when I see you on there and you're really enjoying it and all that, that's what I love about it. So for me, I could talk about that all day. And it's just, I don't think I can ever stop for me. And that's just, you know, that's how I do it. We're going to say, bro. Yeah, JR, to man, I've been on y'all show what about three, three times? Three. Yeah, four. Yeah, four. Four, four times. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I love it because the, number one, the mainstream, there are not a lot of people that know what y'all know. I I never forget Zoe was like, man, when I come on y'all show, I gotta do my homework because y'all know y'all stuff. This is an artist telling you this. And like the stories I got to tell about the memories of what those albums meant or what those songs meant takes me to a great place in my life. And it's, 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 I love being able to share my love of music with people who love music. And also, you know, for Carmen or Layla and them to hear us talk, or like Fonte and, and Nicolay found out when we talked about their album, that's like, the greatest thing in the world so y'all yeah. can't stop <laughs> yeah oh yeah oh yeah nine <laughs> nah that's dope that's dope man and like i said same with apartment 5b i can't ever stop seeing doing this because it's the conversation but i also want to talk with the mcs because again um you guys are like superheroes to me i mean i gotta dig for the samples and chop up drums and all that but i think a lot of that in my eyes is um minuscule compared to what y'all have to do the places where you have to pull what you're talking about ev you said you're dealing with the death of your father your grandfather you know your best friend who was an mc um well you're you're pulling from places vague you're doing a dedication out in the world Matic. i feel like the mcs pour so much more into your uh pour more out of your sober vague what i did love that you said is like it essentially is therapy for you you know it's is getting things off of your chest so it doesn't seem like it's a chore um so i mean i would challenge more mcs who are watching to think about it like that i think it becomes a chore when you are talking about shit that is not true you know <laughs> what i'm saying you know when you have to try to make up stuff to be somebody else that's the chore you know it's no chore i love when people meet me in real life they like damn kill you just how you are on twitter like you know i really yeah, when we was with um joe and everybody in chicago it's like damn kill you really as cool as what the fuck you are on the timeline i'm like because i'm not pretending to be somebody else you know what i mean and things like that whereas i think that's where the chore comes into play so vague i think that's really a gem for a lot of mcs and anybody who's doing their art is that when you're just being yourself and you're using this as therapy and you choose to release it it's it's not necessarily a, a bad thing or it doesn't become the chore anymore um ev ev what, what do you what do you guys think about that that piece of like you think maybe it's too many mcs trying to be something that they're not so that's where chore comes into play i think mcs are always going to be themselves rappers, rappers i apologize rappers is a different thing and mcs are always going to give you 
because to me you can't be an MC and not give an aspect of your true self um not saying it's gonna be 100 true all the time but you got to give uh, something of who you are uh rappers is a different kind of thing uh you know uh, rap is entertainment so you know it's it's you know we me and uh my wife were watching um die heart <laughs> crazy ass fucking movie uh with kevin hart but we were like okay we know it's satire but this writing is really bad like is it meant to be that bad so i think you know when, when it when it comes to um when it comes to entertainment in the music um industry and you talk about rappers and they're coming for that that they're doing entertainment i just hope they know that that's what you're doing and when you when you turn that light off i hope you become something else and maybe portray something else to everybody else that sees you um and i also even more so i hope that i wish that the people and i hope but i wish that the people who listen to it know that this shit is just entertainment it's not this is not meant to be acted out it's not meant to be attributed to your personality it's fucking entertainment and let it be that you know i, I can go watch mission impossible i'm not jumping off no fucking building you know what i mean so it's like, you know what i mean i think we need the disclaimer it used to be before wrestling like this shit don't I try mean, this don't try home. this, this is entertainment do not <laughs> find a goddamn scaffold yeah, yeah. over the fucking house and try to have a midnight express road warrior exactly. scaffold match don't do it and see it, you know and that's the thing for me like i i uh, i like some dirt and shit. i like motherfuckers talking shit. I, I like mop i'm an mop fan you know what i mean i like some of the shit. i don't I think, think that's entertainment though i really think no, MLP is not entertainment i'm just saying right. like to the to the fact of liking things that are not necessarily right the way that i move in life right. i can listen to it i can appreciate it and then i can walk outside and still be at and, right. and that's okay and i think that's that's part of the, that's when it becomes a problem when you create a character and then you try to back the character up but you've created a character now you got everybody else trying to be this character as well in their real life and i think that's where the dissension comes into play and um we start losing ourselves yeah. who was that was it was it? rapper killed we said characters get rappers killed they do yeah yeah i was gonna say was it michael irvin who played who put his son on blast like nigga why are you yeah. rapping like this nigga? Yep. you live in a gated community like <laughs> what are you doing nigga? like come on stop stop man stop you know i gotta send you all this instagram clip my man slayer sent me today it's this pop found out his son a gangster rapper and took off the belt he's like oh yeah we gonna make a new rob nigga. we we gonna make a rob repeat after me nigga. i'm mc cream puff nigga, i live in the suburbs i'm not a gangster like like yeah you know because these dudes are just all portraying it's funny cb4 like watch cb4 and, and the joke of it is is that's yep. where we're at right now yep. you know what i mean that's essentially you know where, where we're at um with the culture all that to say me and vegas got a dope ass discography vegasworldinc.bandcamp.com check it out listen to it if you think it's dope buy it like i said if you don't like it i will pay you back Vegas is not saying that, so do not bother that man. I okay, talk, talk to me. I will cash app you the money back. That's how much I believe in what we're doing. Him and Rel got a new song. He's on Rel's album. Rel's on his album. Uh, JR is executive producing Rel's album. So we getting a lot of music out of 5B fam. Uh, we got the order of the lyricists right here on vinyl. Ev, where can they pick this up at? Uh, tomorrow it'll be live. Uh, you can find the, the actual vinyl is going to be up tomorrow along with the merch and things like that. Um, I will say it is a, um, it's not just a regular, it's not an album. It's, it's more of a, um, how did I call that? It's like a, if you could dictate your process It's more, cause I mean, the piece is about a journey and a process. So the album, I wanted the album to be, uh, to, to be um, aligned with the journey and the process as well. So it's it's kind of like, you know, putting on something and, and listen to a process that happens. Yeah. Very tomorrow, good. It'll be live tomorrow. Um, I got to hit up Kill to figure out how to do it. I mean, I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to POS tonight. So, uh, but as far as how to, how to put it out, that's my, that's my, my right hand lets me know what to do, how to, how to do it the right way. So. Yeah, we're going to get that out there. JR, talk about R&B reps, we've talked a lot about the show for somebody who may not know about it. 
uh, and you want to at least let them know where can they get at you, where can they see the shows and everything. Oh, and two, congratulations on the thousand subscribers. I was about to say, yeah. I would thank y'all, yeah. thank y'all for the for the team, for everybody at Apartment Five B that really pushed for us to get it, and we hit it. It was crazy. I was at work, and Elise was like, "Yo, we hit it." I was like, "What?" And she was like, "Yes, yeah. so I appreciate y'all for putting, you know." tweeting it and all that good stuff for real so i really thank y'all but uh apartment five b uh r and uh, b reps man y'all can check us out when this comes out the newest episode where we talked about uh coolie eye harmony boys the men so this is a y'all ain't had me on for that man See, so, that so, really, oh no man. we talked about you in the episode oh you're talked about in the episode <laughs> <laughs> and not in a good way and then the problem is it's not in a good way <laughs> no, 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 it actually is, it actually is. It, it went from what you used to say to what you say now. Yeah, right. Yeah, there's a part that's not a good way. I know it because I love Cooley High Harmony. That's the thing, y'all. Ain't that's what to I me. said. I was like, he okay. loves Cooley High Harmony. I, yes, I love but then Cooley I was High like, Harmony. what he gives them. But once he went to the show, thanks to Vern, then yes. everything changed. So, uh, we, yo, it's a dope, dope episode. We go through every song. I mean, some of the songs, I'm. Mean, yeah, look, y'all gonna get some honesty with it. Too. Honesty, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. we not gonna sit up there, yeah. The album is five my classic, but you got listen. But uh, yeah, it's a dope episode. It's fun. It's really, really fun. So uh, yeah, just check us out rnbreps.com. Uh, we really want to start bringing people to our page actually. So it's the rnb rnbreps.com. But y'all can check us out on YouTube. You just type in the rnb representatives. Uh, we had R&B reps on Instagram and Twitter for real, but thanks to everybody for subscribing to us. And you know, this is a good thing. And at least with her uh, 60 seconds of vinyl, which I think was brilliant, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And she just gives you an album and talks about it for 60 seconds and that's it. So she got you for a minute and that's it. So I think that was brilliant of her. Uh, everybody knows how I'm wearing the stacks, but everybody knows how much I love Motown. So I do uh, aren't, uh, JR's uh, Motown Life, where I talk about a Motown record behind the scenes and all that for like no longer than three, four minutes. You're getting that because we know people's attention span is like that. So we got to keep you, get you. So come there. Uh, the catch stats is still great. We got a couple of great interviews that's coming up that we talked to. Finally, somebody is going to come through. Thank God. You know what I'm saying? And the person that didn't leave it all behind. We finally he's gonna come through so that's a good thing um yeah, yeah just you know uh you know uh, our um our artist spotlight if you got a song uh your artist you want to come on and talk about it which this is another thing we're at we added on to the show we want another you know platform for indie artists come on talk about your song we can talk about it and you know all that good stuff so really just check out the r&b reps on instagram twitter and type in r&b reps on youtube and just join the party man join the cousins we call everybody cousins so just join the family and all that good stuff be crazy in the live chat like we bug out and all that good stuff so yeah just check us out there in jr's world so i got my twitter back thank god i got that back after a couple of months so i finally got that back so that's my uh, YouTube, uh, my YouTube, my Instagram, and Twitter. So JR's Roller Soul. Yeah. All right. Ev, where can I get at you, good brother? Um, 7nms.com um, or Instagram, 7nmn as in now, m as in master, s as in self, nms underscore. Um, also on Twitter, mental151. All right. And for people who can, if they want to see a piece of the project, is there anywhere where we can send folk your way any creatives who may be wanting to bring profit to their city to their country definitely, and they definitely. Can. yeah we have press kits we got epks um that are set and ready to go out um i'm thinking of some ways too uh because we have like a it's like a we just got a i guess i think it's like a 10 minute um excerpt of the process some of the some of the actual pieces in there as well but yeah, get at me. Um, we definitely can send uh, the actual EPK out to you so you can see it. We would love to get this in as many places as possible. Um, it's a it's a great piece. It's a great piece to do. It's a great team of people that we travel with. And there's a community engagement part that we do. It's not just, we're not just coming in to get on stage. We're actually coming in to connect with the community there. So just know that there's, there's two facets to that. And Kill is, su is such a um, pivotal part of that other process too. So, yeah, every yeah. city we go to, we 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 find MCs who are local. Um, and in Chicago, it was just dope because we had Fillmore Green, we had I Am God, we had Griffin, we had some of the 
dopest spitters in Chicago in the house yeah. for that. So yeah, we definitely do that. Rel, what are you cooking up, good brother? Where are we at with this album? Yeah, yeah. So we 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 almost there. I'm be sending y'all some stuff. Um, yeah, the album is is not. It's called "It's Not You, It's Me." Um, it's, I got a date for it. It's gonna be July 19th, and uh, it's executive produced by Kill and my man Jr. And it's a soul. This is a soulful album, man. So if you enter that, man, it. Yes. give it. Yeah, a lot of lot of lot of soul in this album, man. I got my man Vegas on there. And I'm on his. We just did a joint on his, and it came out crazy. I think we got a good formula, so um, be able to check that stuff out. And um, I do want to say, uh, Ev, if you ever want to have your um, your piece done and out here, um, I do run a performing arts center theater, and uh, maybe we can link up and you know. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm out here, um, you know, Jr. and uh, Kill been been to my been in my job and seeing a show, and uh, it's a, it's it's essentially a theater, um, about 760 seats, um, Park. good parking, top of the line uh, lighting. Mm-hmm. I do a lot of the lighting design and uh, top of the line sound. So we we can link up. Let's talk. build on that because we've been. I'm trying to get it back home. You know, that's a that's a big. It's a it's a big thing to get it back. He's home. out here. He's out I'm here. Actually, I'm actually out out in Maryland now. Oh yeah, we'll get we'll get even even more so. Yeah, that's that's another spot we're trying to get to too. We're just talking about getting out to Maryland and DC. So yes. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Let's we'll link talk about that. And, um, yeah, you can get at me at Uptown Road two one five on the gram. J Ben two one five on Twitter. Jr. Check your email. I just signed up to be on Catch That Mini again. Oh, good. Thanks. <laughs> Check and see what song it is. You're gonna be. You gonna okay. be ready to okay. see that. Yeah. And don't forget Illadel Steak Life. We're gonna get another episode. Oh. My man Kel just sent us and said it's a new spot out here in Maryland. Who claim they from Philly? I think niggas. I don't even think niggas be lying because they just know that if I move to Atlanta and say we from Philly that's automatically gonna get people to come you know niggas don't even know ain't never been to Philly but they just say that it don't take much to know I'm a Rosa roll and cheese whiz yeah, is yeah. what you need to say but some boys out here say they from Philly I looked at their website they don't look crazy but me and Rel and Gadget will take that L so that y'all don't have to so definitely check out Odell Fab Steak Life Odell Steak Life uh vague where can they get at you what are we cooking up which volume two and volume three looking like all right, you can follow me on social media at Vegas World INC on all uh, social media platforms. Uh, check out uh, the new, the latest project for me and Kel called Bedstar Vintage uh, Volume One. It's three tunes. We got actually I got like nine or ten songs. Uh, me and Raul got a joint. You know, we talking that fly shit, um, just just some wordplay shit, um, and. I don't know when it's gonna be out, <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm just really kind of focused more so on uh, writing and some other stuff. And then, um, you know, once it's like set and done, then we can start dropping some joints. So soon, for sure, uh, volume two, because we, we got songs that are ready. Uh, but, you know, uh, it's, it's definitely gonna be dope. It's available on streaming services like Apple and Spotify, but also, uh, VegasWorldInc.bandcamp.com, and real quick on my podcast uh, for when this release, I and this is something I do not do because I just have issues committing. I've I've done three episodes, top five hip hop albums of all time, uh, top five MCs all time, um, and top five beats all time. Um, mm. I don't commit to shit like that. Obviously, some of it is just what I like, um, but I give reasons as to why, and I explain, um, you know, why I like them, especially on the MC side. Because speaking to our conversation, um, you know, it's it's easier to commit to being a fan to somebody who you feel like they rarely disappoint you. Mm-hmm. You, know, right. you just blindly go and, right. and put, they got something new, take my money. Um, if it's disappointing, you know, okay, they probably get me the next time. 
but it's it's real easy and to me i think a lot of times when they make these lists you know they don't they don't think about all these different things and what it means to people and how it connects to people like ev said you know he's performing it's not a packed house but here's this one dude who was touched to tears that felt the need to uh to come and say something to him and and now you know ev do anything this dude is probably gonna remember that moment um and I just want to say this since y'all brought it up, and y'all already know how I feel about this. You're going to put the miseducation of Lauren Hill in front of Michael Jackson? Thriller? That was bullshit. Wow. <laughs> that was bullshit. Wow. That was bullshit. That was bullshit. That was bullshit. Really? Bullshit. Like, when I saw it, right? Because I wasn't trying to be like that. I love both albums. But I was like, oh, it's number two. So, you know, I'm thinking of Stevie. I'm thinking of all these possible prints who could be number one. And I saw so that album. I was like, nah, man, I I love it too. But in front of Thriller, like, come on, man. Like, oh. I tell people we gotta let these kindergartners go back to class, man. We got we gotta we we gave these kindergartners the iPhone for too long because somebody and Apple should stop. Because somebody told me about the list. I was like, I don't even want to see it. Because I know it's going to be bullshit. Like, Rolling Stone, all these lists are just bullshit. Because they're written by people who, whoever wrote that, if you think Lauren Hill's Miseducation is the greatest album of all time, you were probably about 11 when it came out. That that That's what that says to me. What well, are you going to say, Benny? Well, you know who's in charge, uh, Ebro. 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 Right. Ebro. Less, 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 but, but here's the problem here's the, here's the other problem with that and i always tell people because this young this guy was going back and forth i don't know how we got on this we got on nelly defeated <laughs> krs in a rap battle like so and, yeah yeah bro i don't even yeah it was crazy it was like it started off that snoop Oh God, what's my Rod and the Rugged Man was talking to Torrey and Torrey was like, Snoop could be KRS in a battle. And I was like, whoever thinks that should be drug tested. Then the dog walkers came out and everybody was like, oh, Snoop would kill KRS one and blah, 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 blah. And then some then we got into then somebody was like, cause Nelly did it, and Nelly could do it, and Snoop could do it. And I was like, Nelly did what? And they was like, Nelly defeated KRS one. And I was just like, you know, y'all gotta stop with this crazy shit, you know? Like, you really gotta stop. And me and me and this guy were going back and forth, and he was like, "But yo, Doggy Style's like one of the greatest albums of all time." I was like, "Bro, how old are you?" He's like forty-five. I said, "All right, bro, we're five years apart." So I understand when I was fourteen when Criminal Minded came out, you were not. There's no way that you were outside in the way that I was outside. So I wouldn't expect you to know that. Now, when Doggy Style came out, you were fourteen. So I can understand why at fourteen. That is one of the greatest albums to you. Cause he was like, I just feel like 90s hip hop was better than 80s hip hop. And I'm like, that's cause you was a kid and when 80s hip hop was out. You know what I mean? So, and all that to say is that then this other guy came in and he was like, yeah, but look at the hits. Nelly went diamond. He was like listing off his number one songs. And I was like, bro, I don't care anything about that. And here's the moral to the story. Radio plays can be paid for. Awards can be paid for, record sales can be paid for. So at they the end are. of the day, I am positive that Ebro, maybe somebody paid the Ebro's pocket. I don't know. Maybe there's a voting system up in there and you can well, be outvoted. We gonna say explain what it was, but I still think it was a flawed system because it wasn't just, you know, the staff within Apple Music. They also, you know, sent it out to like, you know, radio DJs and other people who could vote. That's why I sold the list all over the place. crazy right. all over the place. But then you wind up where I know when they looked at that one and two, they were like, or oh, like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Frank Ocean, just even Number being five? The the fuck right? So, right. But again, and this is why, like, we got to watch who we, Vern, I, I said this once and I remember you was like, yeah, nigga, take your own advice. I told one of my kids, Everybody don't deserve your conversation. Everybody doesn't deserve your energy. And Vern hit me up like, yeah, nigga, you may want to listen to yourself, <laughs> you know. But that's the thing. Everybody can't be part of the conversation. There was a time at, at one of my old jobs and a black person was telling the white people like that didn't feel right, you know, what we were doing for our kids. And they kind of came back in the room and was like, yeah, I got outvoted. And I'm like, no, you're black. We serve black kids. You can't be outvoted. Like, that's you can't be outvoted. I don't care if 800 white people say, 
guess what? If I say something bad to the Jews, it don't matter if it's a hundred black people, one Jewish person, I'm wrong. So you can't be outvoted. And that's the thing. We, we let the kids come sit at the adult table at Thanksgiving and then wonder why the conversation is some bullshit. You know, right. we can't we can't say that because little Joey at the table we don't want to mess it. We don't want to tell him that Auntie T really ain't his aunt. That's his mother. You know, we can't have a free flowing conversation because the kids are at the table. So y'all got to stop doing this nut ass shit. If you want to do a top 50 album of all time, nigga, nobody's invited to sit at this table who is under the age of 48. Y'all can't. Y'all, y'all, y'all can sit over there and watch us. But the door about to close. You know what I mean? So. You know that that's what it is. So, Vern, where can I get at you? The lone closer. Oh, I apologize. If you were R and B guru, time traveler like Jr., you can come in. I want it. I want to oh, put the age shit. gap on there. We, if you a time traveler, come on, come on. Come on. If you got, if you got the, you know the 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 what is it the 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 neon flux? What is it that, that the, the flux capacitor? If you got the flux capacitor, you can come in outside that. Y'all got way on the other side. Do I even go down to 46? I'll do 46. Let's go to 46. But y'all, y'all can't, y'all 38 year olds can't be up in here voting on that stuff. Love, like Vegas said, I love the miseducation of that. Five Mike out. Greatest album of all time. Hell no. Stop. We can just stop doing that stuff. Leave the crack alone. It's this new drug they're doing. They're taking Molly and they're liquefying it and they're shooting it in their veins. That's the new drug out here in these streets. Yeah, that ass. And, and they're losing weight. And they're losing weight. That, but it's not like a crackhead losing weight. It looks like a positive losing weight because I'm asking people, damn, you working out? They're like, yeah, hey, fuck no, I ain't working out. Kill you, no, I work out. So, yeah. Uh, so that's that's the new thing they're doing. Vern, where can they get at you? The closer, right. you need a house. And what states are you in now? North and South Carolina, Georgia, and Alabama. Um, v the long clothes on Instagram. But, you know, Kill, I want to take, take this time to say your show is very inspiring. Shout out to Ev. Vague and real. It's time for me to let my creativity flow. So, this new album is coming out. (laughs) (laughs) Get it? (laughs) We can get on the stage and have people mesmerized. Why can't I, man? So there you go, bro. Come out with that harmonica album, bro. (laughs) Come out, drop that shit, son. Stevie don't got shit on you, man. <laughs> Stevie ain't got shit on you, my nigga. You dropped that harmonica out, man. Give nigga something to meditate to, man, out here in these streets. Um, y'all know what it is with me, Kill889, Twitter, IG. Real quick, I want to dedicate this show. One of my homegirls, Megan, real cool. Met her on Twitter. Been talking for years. She reached out the other day. Let me know her son, Justin, passed away recently, only 26 years old. So definitely want to dedicate this show to him and to her and just please keep them in their prayers. I can't imagine. Like, I I don't even know where to start. I can't even fill in the blanks. She she hit me up and it's like, I don't even know what to say to you. You know, all I can say is boom, here's the number. If you need anything, call me. I can't even understand what they're going through. I know we say it all the time. Love your hug one hug your loved ones. Love whatever. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Hug yeah. your loved ones. You never know when tomorrow's not promised. And that's serious. I know we say that a lot, but that literally broke my heart when she when she reached out to me and um, said that. So I just can't even imagine that. So uh, definitely please keep their family in your in your prayers. I will catch y'all next week, good peoples. Thanks.